welcome back to the Zelda Informer Podcast, episode number 20. That's right, we made it to a nice round, even number of 20. Uh, this week we have a jam-packed podcast, a lot of awesome topics to get to, but this is also kind of a special occasion because it's the first podcast we've ever had five total people on. Uh, now, as most of you guys might be aware, uh, Mr. Darren is with us, who's our managing editor. I'm back. And he's never on video because his internet sucks. <laughs> so uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, he will be the one voice that talks. And like when none of the rest of us are talking, that's Darren. I'm the voice from uh, above. The voice from above, as I call it on the Nintendo Prime podcast. But that's a, a different story for a different time. Uh, we have our regular co-host with us, Alfred. That is me, the man with the beard. <laughs> we have one of our video specialists, Mr. Daniel. Thanks for having me back. And speaking of video, we have probably one of our favorite YouTubers, Mr. Game Over Jesse. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure being on here for the first time. Yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so... This week is very, very interesting. Um, we have three really good uh, news topics to get through, and it's kind of like more NX stuff because rumors just keep happening. Nintendo just needs to unveil the thing. Uh, sandwiched between two really interesting Zelda things. So uh, the first topic we're going to start with is speedrunning. Uh it's not so much that I want to sit here and talk about, you know, the you know the values of speedrunning, all the different types of speedrunning that happen in the Zelda realm. It's more so because some, a group of speedrunners discovered a brand new way to beat a boss in the Wind Waker. Uh, so, if you haven't seen the story, uh, essentially, th- uh, what are their names again? I don't remember I which no group idea. this is. Bobby did not put their names in the post, so that's always good. Wow. Uh, so fish underscore waffle sixty four is the name of the YouTuber who uh, who put up the video, and they discovered a glitch in the boss battle in the Forbidden Woods. Actually, I believe uh, it's so you know a final boss. What's the name of that final boss? Cal Demos. Cal Demos or something. Cal Demos. Yeah, it's it's yeah. Cal Demos. Yeah, Cal Demos. So apparently, uh, so you know, you use the boomerang and you knock it down. Well. After you do that the first time and you go up to hit the middle part, if you just dump some forest water on the boss, it instantly dies. He's done. Now, is that a glitch and this or was... an Easter egg, though? Right? <laughs> like, it's, it's, that's true. You would assume a glitch, but I, you, who knows? I heard um, it wasn't actually faster, though. Um. Yeah, see, I don't know what the normal speedrun method is to kill it. It's apparently, like, three frames longer to do that method is than it? it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but um, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not sitting here to, to necessarily talk about the value of speedrunning and whether or not this glitch is going to make a difference. Because as Elfer just said, it might not make any difference for speedrunners. It's a cool Easter egg, uh, nonetheless. But, I mean, what is it? We are 13 years removed from this game releasing. And we just discovered a new glitch. Or is this in the HD Easter remake, too? Yeah, it's in both versions. Okay. Is it, it's in both? Okay. It is, yeah. yeah. I hadn't confirmed it in the HD. So... Yeah, that's uh, that's crazy, and the fact that it's still in the HD version is even crazier. Maybe it's because it wasn't discovered before that was made, so they didn't <laughs> patch it. Um, you know, they didn't know. I, I mean, it could be intentional. But I mean, but, yeah, even if true. it's a glitch, I, I would think that it was intentional. Even if it's a glitch, Nintendo like do, wouldn't patch it because with the uh, Ocarina of Time 3D, they <laughs> left in a lot of the glitches, oh, yeah. and they it, knew about them. Yeah, a lot of the glitches. So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So I, I just think it's just really cool that. You know, this new glitch or intentional thing has just been discovered 13 years after the fact. It's super cool. Um, I mean, who would even think, hey, let me just pour some water on this bad boy. See what yeah, happens. I wonder what he was doing when he figured that out, or if it was just like an accident. Right, yeah. Right. <clears throat> just like, oh, dang, hit the wrong button. button. Oh, hey, we went. Oh, wrong bottle. Yeah, it's kind of like the whole question potion. of like, it's like the same question of who was the one that discovered drinking milk from a cow? Like, <laughs> what was he doing when he got the milk? Right. What was this person doing when they were dumping water on a boss? Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Not that they were, like, drinking milk from a cow while they were dumping water on the boss. <laughs> they weren't? But maybe they were. I don't know. That'd be Who knows? Awesome. Maybe. We don't know, man. <laughs> you weren't there, man. <laughs> oh, of course. Of course. Um, so, that's kind of really all. I just wanted to kind of bring that up because that was just a really neat thing. And you guys know, I always like to start the Zelda Informer podcast with something Zelda-related. Um, 
And that just felt kind of appropriate, because we don't we don't bring up the speedrunning community very often. We don't talk about glitches in Zelda games very often. Um, so yeah, hey, congrats on the find. Um, if you guys out there, any of our listeners, discover what they feel is a new glitch, feel free to send it to us at podcast.zeldaformer.com. Maybe we'll talk about it and feature it. But you will get no money. <laughs> you will get no money. Just to talk about and to mention. Yeah. Yep. Um, You'll be so, popular for about a week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for, for a week. See, see if any other websites pick up on the story. Thousands of people will know your name. Yeah. So let's get into some juicy stuff. Uh, we have a new, new batch of NX rumors. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah. That supposedly come from a large retail partner with Nintendo. So this would suggest there was obviously either a behind closed doors meeting between retailers and Nintendo, which was kind of speculated on in the past, but we never heard anything about it after it happened. Um, and it, the reason that it's kind of gotten traction is because a moderator on the official NX subreddit um, apparently went through the approval process for this rumor. Now they, he claims the the person's name is or he or she claims the person's screen name is Flap Snapple. Uh, claims that they have a really rigorous um, verification process, so they haven't really verified uh, too many NX rumors. In fact, they haven't. I think it's been like several, several, several months since last time they, they had anything. D- they do not screw around. I am in the Discord chat for the NX subreddit, and they do not screw around. If you yeah. give like any false information or anything, they will ban you. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> well, it, it and. You know, I kind of liken it to NeoGAF because it's the same thing there. If you falsify shit, you're out. Um, you're done. Yeah. Flop, snap, so that's why this has kind of gained traction because this wasn't a random person. This is a moderator of the place who has who has gone through the process of verifying all this information ahead of time. Um, so take that for what you will, whether or not you want to believe it or not. We At this point, we really don't know what to believe. Um, but there's a lot of interesting stuff in here. Uh, so... He, the, this person does know they rewrote some things uh, to not make it obvious like which retailer this might have came from whether you know whether it's GameStop or EB Games which is like the same company now Walmart etc. Um, so uh, here's kind of the, the details. It's in four sections. So one of them is marketing. Uh, one of the messages for the NX uh, at release is going to be interact with your game on the go, and it was seen on a poster. Uh, whether or not that's a poster that would be at retail or whether or not that was just an advertisement they had at whatever this event was. Um, we don't know. Uh, there's apparently strong co-branding effort with the Mario launch title on many posters. So for starters, first time we've heard any confirmation of a Mario launch title. Um, well, there was the that, that one there... rumor about a Mario launch title. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so this is the second time. Yeah, second time. This is just... I don't know. More. This is legit. more solid. Like, yeah. M- yeah. Like I, I, again, it's all rumors and speculation, so we don't even know. I mean, even the guy who posted Flap Snapple doesn't one hundred percent know. All, all uh, he claims to know is that he verified who this person is. Um, that this person does work at said retailer he claims to work at. Um, whether or not the information is legit from that point on, you know, who knows? The, the guy could still be just making stuff up. Uh, so. Uh, another part of the marketing says the console is currently set to launch with at least four titles on deck. A lot of people focused on only four games. It says at least four, so there could be more than four. Well, we already um, know Breath of three the Wild, of them. Breath of the Wild's one. Hopefully. Uh, I never said Just it, Dance hopefully. is supposed to launch with it. I'm betting. I'm not, well, I don't know if it'd be a good idea to, and I don't know if it will be, but we know that at least so- the new Sonic game is confirmed for the NX. But I don't ever yeah. want to see a Sonic launch title ever again. <laughs> like I'm okay. That... I, I'm okay if it's like what, what was the uh, was it Sonic Lost Worlds on Wii U? Yeah, like that game was decent. If that was the kind of game they launched with, that's not that bad. Did they was Sonic Lost Worlds a launch title for the Wii U? No, no, it was. Okay, not. yeah, no. I, I just don't. They, Sega you don't trust have them. A, a good, yeah, I don't. After Sonic 06, they never they should never do another launch title ever again. <laughs> Just hit oh, what if it's like colors and generations? Like they yeah, but those weren't games. launch titles. Though. I know. And the new but Sonic Boom thing, game like, on I don't 3DS think, is getting like like reviews. my kind of thing is I don't think being a launch title has anything to do with whether or not it's good. Well, they tend to over like over they they have like a no man's sky syndrome, but they don't promise <laughs> it until it happens, and so then <laughs> sure. they like rush it really you know, quickly. And, and I can see because they have what two two big Sonic games mm-hmm. in production. Well, I wouldn't I really call like them, Sonic Mania. A, I can see them being more like game. a summer release yeah 
Um, like maybe maybe like the bigger the higher budget one ends up being like Holiday or something. It seems um, to me like again, I we, remember. We don't, we, like, it, like we haven't I seen a lot of those quarter games. four. Wasn't it like the fourth quarter of 2017? Yeah. Well, the yeah. one, the one for sure that they didn't reveal any gameplay for. That's definitely a Q4. Yeah. 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 That's what I'm talking so about. So we're Sonic talking Mania about Mania, Mania or are we talking about Project Sonic? No, Project Sonic is the one I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah, Project Sonic is the one we only saw like a piece of art for or whatever. We saw the the short. Yeah, it was. It was like yeah, the little, little CGI teaser. short. Yeah, it was Sonic really and Classic gameplay. Sonic. Um. So, anyways. Uh, four titles on deck, supposedly. Obviously, if the you know they're hinting that one of them is obviously Mario at launch. We know Breath of the Wild's one. Um, whether or not these are four Nintendo titles, don't know. We know Just Dance is supposed to be that launch because it's supposed to be the previous year's version. Mm-hmm. Um, so this year's version of Just Dance, and then uh, whatever else. Ubisoft claim they're making more games for the system. They might have another game at launch. Uh, Zombie U two. <laughs> yeah, no. I was just yeah. thinking about Ubisoft, where I mean, can... and, and Nintendo, you know, they supposedly um, didn't officially delay, but maybe internally delayed the NX two when they did in March, so they could have more games. So it's it's in theory Nintendo might even have more. Um, yeah. Because you know what I hear when I hear Mario and I hear uh, Zelda, where's their game for moms and dads? Mm. But we have NX heard rumors works. that they're. Like we're They're going, the Wii, you know, a Wii Sports or a Cooking Mama or some kind of title that uh, you know, especially if it's a handheld that appeals to like a more broader spectrum audience. Yeah, but they, I've, there are rumors that they're going back towards more of a hardcore fan base. So I don't know if we're gonna see games like that at launch. Well, we'll see. And one thing to keep in mind, like that, that could be a smart strategy too, uh, mm-hmm. because early adopters aren't gonna be people like that anyways. Early yeah, adopters but... get it off word of mouth. So um, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. Obviously, well, we don't actually know what the NX is. Uh, let's get through the rest of these rumors here. Yeah. Um, so the marketing says that uh, stores will be receiving demo units around February. So, you know, around then people can actually go out and demo the system, um, which that's good. That I, that would kind of make sure the NX is on target for March if they obviously have demo units public. Mm-hmm. Um, this is one interesting point. The base price point. Seems to be sitting at two hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents. That is a little more than I think people expected. Yeah. What was the Wii U's launch base price? Uh, two ninety nine and three fifty. See, okay. Yeah, three fifty originally got you the deluxe version, and then whenever yep. they cut out the standard version, the deluxe price fell to uh, technically the they price. still have the standard version. They yeah. still sell in the United States. Here's the thing. I'm. I'll pay that. I'm going to get an NX. Hopefully, day well, one. If it's if the NX is five hundred dollars, I'm going to get it yeah, day one. All, but I'm all a hard I need to know Nintendo is that Breath fan. of the Wild, Breath Dude, of the Wild is de- like a definitive version on there. I'm guaranteed the NX is day one. I don't care if it costs yeah. eight hundred bucks. I'm buying it day one. Dude. Oh yeah, it has the definitive <laughs> Zelda version. I don't care. I I just built a seventeen hundred dollar computer. I'll go return some parts. <laughs> I'll downgrade. I don't, I don't need the <laughs> GPU. I don't I, need this graphics card. I, I don't I'm just need gonna this go stuff. You guys want like an awesome, you know, 1080p, 60 FPS, six stream going on with a 1080p camera. Like you want all this great stuff. Yeah, Who fine. needs an internal fan when you have a Wii U and an NX? <laughs> I, have, I have a water cooler. I'm just gonna open the case and blow on it manually <laughs> on the CPU. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, so that that's a very interesting price point. But there's another part to this price point that that. Is interesting because that's not the only, apparently, version that will release. So there'll be a 299 bundle. Oh, I'm sorry, a 299 just the, a regular NX version. Standard. Don't know if it has any games with it. Standard version, as you would call it. Uh, but apparently, there's a bundle per version that Breath is sitting at 399.99. Holy cow! My bet's on Breath of the Wild for that. And it says the contents of this bundle is currently unknown. So. Obviously, if Mario's a launch title, it could be a Mario bundle. It could be a Zelda bundle because, you know, Breath of the Wild is reportedly the most expensive game they've ever made. Um, so, you know, if it's $100 more, you would assume that it's not just, you know, the Breath of the Wild game. Maybe it's all three Amiibo. You also get with it. It's got to be something that makes yeah, the value Yeah, I would hope it's the game it. and the Amiibo. I would snap that up so quickly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and we don't know what the Amiibo is going to even cost. I can imagine the, that Guardian Amiibo, there's no way they're selling that for $13. Whoa. That thing is huge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it'll probably yeah. be the... It's also it'll be like a twenty or twenty-five dollar. Isn't it also yeah. the only amiibo that actually has movable movable parts? parts. Yeah, it yeah. is. Of yeah, the it's, Zelda, it's going to be pricey. That is not going to be And and the Link amiibo with the horse doesn't run into trees. <laughs> Real horses don't run into trees that much, <laughs> right? <laughs> 
Oh, yeah. I, I love Anyways, um, I'm hoping uh, before we move on. Uh, sure. I, I'm hoping that the bundle comes with how the Wii U had its own gamepad that had the Zelda logo on it, mm-hmm. and then sure. obviously there's always the 3DS special editions that have. See, I, well, uh, what I the hope this bundle stuff. is. I hope this bundle has Mario and Zelda in it. Yeah. And a second controller. And, well, if you need a second controller, I don't know. Yeah, that's going to be I interesting. I don't know yeah. if the Mario game is going to be multiplayer, but if it is, it would be nice to have a second controller in there. I, uh, I, I hope, hope it not, has then... local multiplayer, because Mario games need that. Yeah. Well, it depends. Well, if it's like a Mario Galaxy type game, I don't really need someone collecting stars while I play Well, Mario. that's true. Um, I mean, I... That, I know that's the way they did it with Galaxy 1 and 2, but again... Who did that? The really, really one person's playing the game, so... Um, I don't know if we've have we even talked about the possi- like what their second controller is gonna be, if they're sticking with the screen like the handheld. Uh, we briefly mentioned it before in a previous rumor how that's not gonna be the main like the the, atta- yeah. the detachable controllers won't be actually the main control input. That's just for on the go. Okay. Okay. Um, that's what, that that's a rumor that's out there right now that like, there's gonna be an included like a, an actual controller. So obviously okay. we don't know. We don't know what it looks like. We don't know if it's standard. We have no no idea. Could could be Wiimote 2.0 for all we know. We have no idea. But if its battery okay, life is as good as the Wii U Pro controllers, I'll be a happy happy. The, guy. Oh, they should just like rebrand the Wii U Pro controller. Or, in my or do that. I think that's a great controller. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, it could use some better shoulder buttons, but that's about it. I don't really have any other criticism of that controller. Yeah, you, but you get yeah, used that's, to uh, the analog stick being. The, on top the, the of problem buttons. I have with this yeah. price point, though, uh, j- just to kind of get back into the whole price, is that if this is primarily a handheld unit. The 3DS already proved it couldn't sell at 250. So, are, are they really just is... banking on the fact that this is a hybrid? So, like console gamers are going to see it as a value. I mean, console gamers might view it as, hey, for 399 or for 299, we could be getting a PlayStation 4 Pro or whatever. No, that's just a slim. Pro is a bit, bit higher. But if they bit higher, what is it? Point. 399. It might be 399. I think so. Yeah. Okay, but then you look at the bundle price. That's 399. No, I know. So it's yeah. kind of like, yeah, you get these awesome games with it, but you can go get a PS Pro that is ten times more powerful and does 4K gaming. I, I always thought the best way Nintendo could market the NX, if it is this hybrid, to where you could call it a handheld or a home console, is how at E3 Xbox came out and said Project Scorpio is going to be the most powerful console ever. If they took that same initiative and said this is going to be the most powerful handheld to ever exist... Well, dedicated so, so they did that with the Vita. Yeah, but if if they did that the and then said that it is like a secondary home console to where you can plug it into the TV as like a secondary function, mm-hmm. I think that would be the perfect way for them to market it without people getting too confused on what exactly it, it is. Yeah, but then I, I feel the, the console problem... gamers would be like, oh, we're taking a back seat this generation because it's primarily yeah. handheld, but you can plug it into yeah, your TV. Yeah, primarily handheld, and for that price, we can get something more powerful from the company. I think, right. I think how Nintendo conveys the NX will be the, the death or the life of this thing. Because if they don't convey it well then it's not going to fly. <laughs> and they have not been doing yeah, that well lately. No. Um, or e- ever at all with the NX. Yeah. I mean, at least like the Xbox One, it had really bad messaging at the start, and now the messaging is good. Well, but they um, listened to their fans and fixed everything. Well, and yeah. they put a guy in charge who knows what the hell he's doing. Yeah. I don't know why he wasn't in charge before it launched. That, the whole launch mess would have never happened. Um, but yeah, it, I, it it's kind of... Interesting to me because it seems like one ninety nine ninety nine is the sweet spot for handheld gaming, to, for it to go to a ma- like a mass market price. Because um, they did that with the three DS, it's been staying there. Yeah, I mean you know you can get the normal three DS a little cheaper now, like one seventy one eighty. But the, you know the XL is the best selling system now, and that's one ninety nine ninety nine generally. Um, new three DS XL even sells for right around that price. You can easily find sales for it at that price. Um, so I'm kind of concerned that even if their focus is going after hardcore gamers, hardcore gamers don't care as much about handheld gaming as they do about console gaming. Um, and the appeal of handheld gaming is more of a mass market, blue ocean, appeals to kids, appeals to you know some people in college, appeals to teenagers who are just a better experience than what they get on their phones. That's the problem. Uh, want to play their Pokemon, want to play their... 
what if it, that's the problem with a hybrid console because you need to make it feel like the console gamers aren't taking a back seat and are being limited because they have to develop it so it can be played on the go. I mean, the, the only the only thing that I feel or this price point would work is if they like, hey, look, we're selling this thing at two ninety nine, but guess what? It is it like terrible. You know, I know they hate talking about specs, but if they could say, look, this is a PlayStation Four, but you could take it with you, that would sell. Yeah. yeah, I mean, but I don't know say, how they're gonna do that in a handheld. Like right. PlayStation Four doesn't have to deal with having a screen or detachable controllers or you know all this stuff that we've I heard. I think what they're what they're banking on is the fact that everybody's already got those consoles. Yeah, but so then why would they want this? No, I know, but I think that that's what they're thinking is it's like, oh hey, they've already got you know the PS Four and the Xbox One, and they, so they can buy the NX when it comes out sure. in March. But here's um, the thing: one if, of the things if, that I look oh. No, sorry, Alfred, you can go on. Oh. The thing that I was looking at with that price point, I know this really doesn't make sense, but what if the fact that... What if the two ninety nine ninety nine isn't the hybrid? What if that's just the home console, and the three ninety nine ninety nine is the hi- hybrid with the dock. console? Yeah, with, with the dock. And, and the dock has extra out. processing that brings it up. Yeah. That, that's been something... Because they had a patent for, um, like, you know, attaching like things yeah. that aren't by your TV to get more processing power. Um, we don't obviously know there hasn't been any the only rumors with the dock has been like two like it has two USB ports on it or whatever well I'm just imagining that like there is a kind of this is a terrible example um, <laughs> but I imagine it kind of like the steam link um, <clears throat> to where you have something that can just plug into the TV that's just a console in and of itself but then the 399.99 is the handheld and the plug-in for the TV. So you get both of those. Well, then because it better... It better be a pretty good handheld. Like, it better be really, really powerful. Like, we're still running yeah. into the... If you're selling at the same price point, and I know the title wants to say, oh, we don't compete with the Xbox One or PlayStation 4. I know. Bottom line, if you're if you're targeting this at a premium price point, which 299 and 399 feels like a premium price point to me. That's not mass yeah. market. Yeah. If you're targeting that, that means you're targeting hardcore gamers... And hardcore gamers already can get really, really good stuff for those prices. So yeah. you to entice them, it has to match them, and you know it doesn't have to match the Scorpio. Scorpio is probably gonna be like five hundred, but yeah. at, it needs to be at least PS4, if not slightly better than the PlayStation Four, and on the go. And that's the only way I think they have a shot to even convince hardcore gamers to hop on board. But here's the problem: what if the Scorpio comes out and is like three ninety nine ninety nine? Well, Nintendo can worry about that at the end of the year. Then they <laughs> yeah, might have to do. Then they might have to do a price drop at the holiday, yeah. and yeah. then do another ambassador program for everyone who bought it at launch. Yeah, I mean they I, did it with the 3DS, so it's not like unheard well, of. Nintendo 3DS, 3DS had more of a reason to, considering there were no launch games that were really good. But I mean, at 3.99. Well, that that's the price you can get the pre the PlayStation Pro. Yeah, right? I, I, I know. Yeah, probably. Yeah, so let me, let me check on that real quick. You know, and there's been rumors that the NX could do like the 4K Netflix and stuff, but um, PlayStation Four could do like 4K native gaming if yeah, you, if, if developers want to do it. And um, it's it's one terabyte hard drive too for yeah. the PlayStation Pro. Now, granted, Nintendo could save money on that by going cartridges, not needing that huge hard drive. Just Which this rumor does state that it uses digital. cartridges, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, this rumor does say that later. Yep. Um, so getting back to the rumor, uh, the, ne- the next part is packaging. Uh, it said the package for the NX will be slightly larger than the Wii U's package, which again, um, that kind of supports maybe the docks included with it. Maybe there's just more stuff in the box because uh, the Wii U box seems pretty big for a handheld. Yeah. Um, but again, if it comes with all the accessories and the extra controllers and stuff, maybe they just need that big of a box. Um, the packaging is relatively clean and simple, which that's what Nintendo has done for a while. I think since uh, N64 days? Was the last time they had like a really wild box? Yeah. 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 That was it. As far as I can the, remember, the GameCube, the GameCube was pretty. Was... Yeah, the GameCube was pretty plain. Yeah, and then the Wii was just bare bones. I mean, they had some bundles was... with GameCube that had some stuff, but like just the, the launch base GameCube package wasn't that great. But you know, that's, um, that's better because less is more, in my opinion. You know, like. Sure. I mean, if it's just it's too fine much... as long. I'm okay with the simple designs as long as it cleanly conveys what it is. Yeah, exactly. Unlike yeah. the Wii U boxes that did not convey what a Wii U is. Mm, that's true. Um, the color scheme for the packaging, this is really weird. Because you know how Nintendo's went with like this whole red theme lately? Mm-hmm. Uh, this rumor says the, the packaging is white and blue, which is like Wii U and Wii color schemes. Yeah, which worries me a bit. Um, that, is, that is weird. But again, we don't know if these rumors are true, so... 
you know, take all this with a grain of salt. Uh, the packaging apparently still says NX. You know, this was just at that event. Granted, they have not unveiled the thing yet, so they probably don't want, you know, if it's not going to be NX, they're not going to have the name of it at an event where it can leak out. Um, however, there's still no indication if this was a placeholder or if it's the final name. Uh, the areas of the packaging that would usually depict the hardware happen to be blurred out and redacted by Nintendo in order to keep it hit. Bad idea, but okay. It, it I, I could see it being a good idea um, for the fact, like if this was just like a, a meeting with with uh, marketing people at various uh, retailers, I could see how you're like, yeah, we we haven't unveiled this yet, but we know if we tell you, picture people are going to like sneak a phone picture and it's going to get out. Yeah. Did, so did they tell them the specs for it, or did they just no, say this uh, there, is the NX? There, there is no, there, there is officially no specs in these. Rumors. Okay. So nobody. No, I meant like the people that were there. Do we know if they? We have no idea. This is all we know. Okay. We don't even know if this happened. This is still just a rumor. It's hearsay. Uh, um. So uh, beyond that, we get to the features and specs. Now it's mostly just features, uh, but there are some interesting spec notes. For starters, games will be on cartridges. That's been an ongoing rumor. Since NX rumors basically started, yeah, um, there was a, there was a redacted part of the rumor um, that he I don't know why the mod included it when um, he ended up taking it away because uh, he said they hadn't completed verification on it. Which again, you could maybe use that as a big red flag for all these rumors because originally they included something that they didn't verify. Um, but anyways, that's been redacted, so I'm not going to go over that. It has to do with the size of the carts and compressing data. Okay. Um, so, uh, it, it says here that 4K streaming has been mentioned. Again, you know, it makes a lot of sense. There, there's no way you release a device in 2017 that can't do Netflix at 4K. It's just right. not going to happen. Yeah. Um, unless it's a phone that only has like a 1080p screen, but it's a phone. You don't need 4K in it. Yeah, a console <laughs> um, is essential. But on a console, like, I mean, Especially on. now. Especially although although Netflix Xbox doesn't let me stream 4K to my 4K monitors right now on my PC, and that upsets me. Netflix, you need to get on that. I don't know why I could get a better picture quality on the same resolution screen, but bigger. I don't, I don't get it. Anyways, uh, what this likely means is obviously a playback of content such as Netflix, etc. Not gameplay related. There was no f- uh, mention of 4K with games. That doesn't mean there won't be 4K with games, but um, that was not talked about at all at whatever event this was. Um, the target, apparently is for all games to be 1080p at 60 FPS. Which is amazing um, news, actu- in my that's opinion. That's actually a piece of... Uh, that's actually something they're using in marketing. Which would be which, amazing. This is weird, because Nintendo doesn't tout specs and doesn't tout capabilities. So targeting 1080p, 60 FPS, and actually using it as a marketing message seems a bit, a bit odd to me. Cause it, which it is, does not, that seems well, like something that, Sony or Microsoft would do. Well, that's weird, though, because that's such a standard thing now. Like, it's that's not, not standard. Well, I mean, like... It's standard for PC gamers. That's true. Uh, the PlayStation Four and Xbox One it is not standard at all. This, that's um, my thinking. It should be. PC. It should be standard. But here's the thing: yeah. you, you can't enforce 1080p 60 FPS. Besides, on your internal games, mm-hmm. PlayStation Four and the Xbox One alone, not the Slims and all that stuff. Those consoles can do 1080p 60 FPS. The developers don't do it because they want to push prettier graphics and more particle effects and more physics. Um, and to do that, they can't hit 60 FPS. They can't always hit 1080p. Well, some some of the in-house games do, though. Sure, it's sure. Some of them do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I'm not saying... Okay, I don't mean to say, like, none of the games do 1080p 60. The Wii U can do 1080p 60. We have games can. that do it on the Wii U. Yes. Yeah, I don't see a game as detailed as, say, The Witcher or whatever the next big Call of Duty Battlefield game is running at 1080p and 60 frames a second on I think, a Nintendo console. Called, if it's but, Call of Duty, I think they'll target 60, but you're not yeah, getting 1080. But with Nintendo games, um, easily you, you can only put so much detail into Mario before he just starts <laughs> looking weird. Well, it depends <laughs> on the particle effects and the physics and all that stuff they do too. Art direction, because they could, you know, like Mario Galaxy might be a lot more intensive than say 3D World is. Yeah, this is the realest looking um, Mario you will ever see. <laughs> Yeah, well, like, it's kind I don't of one think of those... you need to see his mustache yeah. hairs wave in the wind. <laughs> on, on a yeah. side note, what I was thinking about. on a side what, note, can we just acknowledge how blue Mario's eyes are and like every marketing material for Mario in the past like year or so? His eyes are the that deepest is the blue, blue they're using for NX. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um. So obviously, we don't really know what 1080p 60 FPS means because Nintendo's already been doing that with you know, a pretty good chunk of their Wii U games. Um. So. 
in theory, if this is the, what they're targeting in their marketing message, that would suggest that, hey, this is pretty close to like a, a PlayStation 4 level. Like, we could do modern games at 1080p60. Um, we're not going to go beyond that. Um, at least not this time. They could announce that it's going to be an iterative console that in two or three years is going to have a new version, and that could target 4K or something. But um, Which... At this point, everyone else is doing it, so if Nintendo doesn't do it, then they're really going to fall behind. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. on that subject, I know it might be a bit off topic, but I was having sure. a similar discussion the other day to where if Nintendo does release this as the handheld that can dock onto the docking station and get a little bit more powerful, um, with, say, the Nintendo 64, for example, because back in the Super Nintendo days, they would put the extra processing power inside the game itself. But whenever Mm -hmm. they came out with the Nintendo 64, they had it to where you could just swap out the RAM. And then it wasn't individual games that had the chip inside of it. You just needed to pay more for the extra RAM, and then whatever games required it would use it. That goes into their patent for the plug-and-play peripheral. Yeah. So mm-hmm. with like uh, they could they could release instead of replacing your NX unit at least for a couple of generations it could just be hey get a new docking station exactly yeah mm-hmm. like in say two to three years they could come out with one, a docking station that would make it twice as powerful yeah or you three want times 4K. as powerful I mean and it'd be really easy marketing because it's already becoming very easy at when you go to stores being able to recognize what's 1080p what's 4K and if they just throw 4K on the box you know as a peripheral thing people are gonna get that. Yeah, and then instead of having to pay the four hundred dollars to get the entire system, you would just have to pay like the extra one fifty yeah. or two hundred to get the more powerful processing unit. And then you could uh, presumably even trade in your old docking station to get sure like fifty dollars off or something. Yeah, at GameStop. I, so they, they they note here. Well, I don't know if I'd actually trade in the docking station because if the docking station is literally drop the console in and go or drop the NX in and go. I have more than one TV in the house. I want a docking station every TV. <laughs> um, I'm going to bed. I'm playing some. I'm playing that Breath of the Wild, baby. I'm yeah. downstairs in my office. I'm playing the Breath of the Wild on my monitor. Oh I'm yeah. Whatever. You know, I'm gonna play it everywhere. Um, <laughs> but so so to, to kind of further go, get into this, uh, the 1080p60 is supposedly uh, in relation to gameplay on the console portion. So again, targeting your TV. Um, the handheld portion apparently is going to be uh, possibly targeting 900p. It's unconfirmed. I wouldn't be surprised if it's 720p instead of 900p. Uh, but I definitely would not be thinking 1080p on the handheld portion. No. Yeah. Uh, that would be so good. expensive. And there's no reason to really do it. Yeah. I know like a lot of our phones, and our phones look really nice and everything, but uh, for gaming purposes, you don't necessarily need to have that on that small of a screen. Yeah, like some um, certain cell phones have like a 6-inch screen with the 4K resolution, and it's like, what? Oh, things look beautiful point? on it, too. Some have OLED, OLED, sorry, I, was, I can't even say it out loud, <laughs> OLED screens um, on their phones. And let me tell you, they look absolutely fantastic. They look beautiful. Is it worth the extra money for me to have that? Not really. No. Um, you know, uh, eventually those screens will become you know cheaper and more mass market. Like the Vita had a version that had an OLED screen, um, and it looked fantastic. Um, so that's kind of it. That, that that's the whole batch of the rumors. Um, they claim that they have more rumors they're sitting on, but they haven't verified anything yet. Which again is why I feel weird. They released a rumor that they later had to redact because it wasn't verified. It, it's just really weird to me. Um, as I said, that could be. Maybe the biggest red flag in all of it is the fact that they redacted part of the rumor. They said it was from a second source, though. If you read the Reddit post... Yeah, yeah. It says a secondary source who had not yet completed verification, so then why was it included? Mm, yeah. When they say they have other rumors, they're not including because they haven't verified it. So it's kind of like, why did you even throw that in with the batch then if you didn't verify it? It's just it? another reason to take this rumor with a grain of salt, as with any rumor. Yeah. It, it, yeah, movie. even going over to the Eurogamer stuff, where even the whole thought process of it being a hybrid, like it seems pretty set in stone. That's what it is, but we don't really know. Um, you know, the only people that would are either developers who have it or Nintendo. Yeah, um, and I'm sure even the number of developers that have it is probably still really small. Like I'm sure Ubisoft has it because they're, they're, they said they're working on some games for it, so they must have a dev unit. But I, for all we know, no one from Ubisoft has said anything. Um, and a lot of other people have just said they're excited about the concept publicly, but it didn't like sound like they actually had a dev unit in hand to, to know. Yeah. Um, I, w- just like I would the people imagine from Bethesda were like, "Hey, if it's more powerful enough, we'll include it." Well, you would know if it's powerful enough if you have a dev unit. 
Yeah, I, I would imagine Nintendo did something like uh, to the developers that they may not trust as much. They would give them a target see, for what the specs would reach and say, yeah. try to make it run on hardware similar to this because that's what we're aiming for. And well, then later on, they would. A, give a lot them of the what, uh, what, a lot of the rumors started when the supposed SDK was released, which is not that's not a dev unit. Um, you know, that's just a kit that you can put on a computer, and it kind of gives you I, an idea of um, what the code base is going to be like, what the harbor is going to be like, etc. Like what you can expect, so you can kind of tailor your games to it uh, without actually having a dev unit. Um, but again, even the SDK stuff is all rumors. We have no idea. Uh, it's October. It's supposed to be releasing in like what five months? Yeah. Yep. So mm-hmm. we're less any, than any, any day early. now. Apparently, there might be like units in February in stores. Is that the first time I'm going to see what the NX is? <laughs> yeah, just, really. I'm going to announce it. I'm going to show up at GameStop and be like, uh, what's this thing next to the Wii U? Oh, that's an NX. <laughs> what? <laughs> Thanks, that's Nintendo, a, for letting me know it appeared in the awful. store before you sent out. You sent out well, retail units for demos before you even unveiled the thing. That to to be fair, <laughs> I think the general audience went into a GameStop or Walmart and seen the Wii U there and was like, "Oh, what what's what kind of Wii is this? <laughs> like, what's right. what's this controller? Right. Where can I buy it?" Um, as long as the name has nothing to do with the Wii in it, they can. <laughs> it, anything is fine. Yeah, but I'm pretty yeah, sure they, they, they've uh, said they're the Xbox. On. So. <laughs> This is just wild, man. The NX rumors just keep flowing. Um, nothing from Nintendo. Nothing from <laughs> Nintendo. Outside of, we are not going to talk about it at this event. Like, they just don't, don't... I mean, I guess you want to make people stop speculating, but you know how you do that? Announce when you are going to talk about it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, there's only... You said you're talking about it this year. There's only, you know, this month and two more to go. Not that hard to be like, hey, this is the day we're doing it. <laughs> and then yeah. say, well, like... They could even say something like, My worst don't expect fear. anything announced until December or after the holiday season. My, my like worst that. fear is that they're just not even going to release the system. They've yeah. scrapped the entire idea. Oh, no, don't they're say like, that. They're like, crap, everybody knows. Now the secret's out. we got to make but something like, different. But like, they don't know what the NX is. So <laughs> we're going to scrap this, delay it like a year or two, and come up with something completely different. Yeah, this I, is my conspiracy think, theory. Um, <laughs> realistically. Yeah, I'm scared. Like, this is... It's crazy. It's supposed to be unveiled this year. They didn't do it at E3, supposedly because they were scared of people copying them. Um, if the copying is the hybrid thing, well, the cat's already out of the bag, so there's no reason to not talk about it. Now. It's not yeah. like that's really something that they would copy because Sony did that first. Yeah, and the thing is, Sony already tried it. it. It wasn't quite, like, it wasn't a single solitary system, so you could argue that this yeah. might be a better concept for what Sony was doing. Yeah, but uh, it's not like a new concept. I, I mean, think... and, and you know, you already have, like, it, it's not necessarily hard to make it appealing um, in terms of games, because it's, it, you can just say, hey, look, for the first time ever, all Nintendo games, one system. I mean, that's going to be the big selling point, is you get your Pokemon, your Fire Emblem, your Animal Crossing, plus your Breath of the Wilds, plus your 3D Mario games, plus, you know, 2D uh, and 3D Animal Metroids. Animal Crossing, and, please, I love you. Yeah. Um, like, like <laughs> you, you don't be, oh, will there be an Animal Crossing on Wii U? It doesn't matter, it's NX, everything comes at NX. Yeah, I, I don't know if you're going to be touching on this topic later, but realistically, uh, I think later this month, Nintendo's supposed to be having their investors meeting, and sure. other than the new Pokemon coming out, the NES Classic, uh, or the Famicom Classic, and uh, the new Paper Mario that just came out that everyone's loving, they don't really have much to go over. Mobile games. So maybe... I think they may touch on the NX or say we have something planned and just mention it in passing, but they won't say They're going to do, like, like last, what, the last investors meeting, that's when they said, um, hey, we're going to announce it this year. Yeah. They said they were going to announce it. And that it would come out in March next year. Was they one before that? Yeah. And uh, I think it was the new 3DS that was first talked about during... An investors meeting. Hey, don't forget, they just announced that Galaxy 3DS like a month ago. Yeah, it's saw it in <laughs> Target the other day. Oh, boy. Um, so, we're going to kind of move on from the NX, because at this point, I feel like we're kind of beating a dead horse. Like, there, there's some juicy stuff in here, uh, but we spent a lot of time talking about probably the juiciest part of it, the price. Yeah. Um, otherwise, it's just more rumors to throw on top of the piles of rumors we already have. Um, you know, maybe someday we could just do a full, like, 
discussion oriented on. Uh, like, if we ever find out when the index is going to be unveiled, that'd be a good time to put together like a nice discussion on what we think might happen at that event, and then go through the rumors then. Yeah, um, unless they have their own event planned, I think sure. the only thing that's left for this year is the Game Awards. Uh, well, wouldn't that be funny if they announced it there? If oh boy. that is the only thing that we are um, aware of for events, but Nintendo's probably unveiling this in like a direct or something. Yeah, yeah. But you said, but that's how they released Breath of the Wild for the first time. Was that the Game of the Game Awards? No, it was at E3. Really? Yeah, yeah they showed it off at E3. They had a really yeah, small trailer at E3 2014. 2014. Yeah, but they did oh, do the Game, game Awards. The first time was... they had, first time they had gameplay, and I'm like yeah. air quoting over here, was at the Game Awards, and it was a really bad showing because it was like this, all this off screen. <laughs> yeah, like it. I don't know what. Like that would have been cool to start that way, but like people want to see the game, and you're not really showing us the game. Um, but I yeah, think... it was. It, it, yeah, it is possible to. I mean, Nintendo. Oh, that'd be a bad If one. what you said, like Alfred, I think you said earlier, you think they're targeting a hardcore audience with this. The Game Awards is the most hardcore of audiences there are. Mm-hmm. So but it that's would make in sense, December. and that would be a huge get for uh, Jeff Keighley, who runs that. They'd be like, "Dude, we're getting a console unveiling at this thing. It's yeah. going to steal the show." Nintendo that's all the new does, ones we're talking about. Nintendo has um, a bigger presence than most. Any other developer, well, they, third they, party or first it party, it helps that um, Reggie Fizeme has like a really good, uh, like a really good relationship with Jeff Keighley. Yeah, um, and like he was, pers- he's been personally involved with both Game Awards so far, like on the main yeah. panel for it. He, hasn't so, he been funding it too a little bit? Or is that um, just yeah, there was there was a rumor, not the first one. There was a rumor the second one that Nintendo, um, that like all the members on the board, like the groups in it, help fund it, so it's not just all out of one person's pocket. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh. I think that'd be a mistake to drop it at Game Awards, though, because that's December 1st. That's too late. Well, it, it, it's all about timing. Yeah. Um, at this point, the PlayStation Pro is already going to be out. It's already going to be a thing. VR already released. Um, you know, the Scorpio is not going to be probably really talked about until E3 next year. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, they could do an unveiling event like they did for the original Xbox before E3, and they just talk about the games at E3. Who knows? Either way, Scorpio is more so going to dominate the second half of the year. Um from December on forward, there is nothing for news. It's just here's all the games mostly released in November. Um, now we're just waiting for the next year to find out what else there is to talk about. So December isn't really a bad time to talk about it when it's going to be coming out a few months later. It's just a weird time to talk mm-hmm. about it. It's but like again, saying- like like if they can grab all the hype heading in the holidays, being like, hey, look. You know, if, if you're still doing Christmas shopping, if you haven't bought, like, that PlayStation Pro yet, just wait. We have that, but it's a handheld. Yeah. Yeah, go pre-order it. and then Like, go pre-order it now, and that's, like, here, crush pre-order. Here's your present. Go pick it up in March. Honestly, I take <laughs> yeah, that. Also, I take you that can as put, You can put this in the... We're, we're going to release special, like, Christmas cards that, you know, are literally, you go redeem it, and you grab your NX Day 1, you know, or whatever I'd be psyched. Honestly, I'd be psyched <laughs> if I, on Christmas morning, I opened up, and it's, like, an envelope, and it's just, like... Here's your pre-order for NX. I'd be like, shit, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I yeah. wouldn't. I wouldn't be upset about that. God damn it! <laughs> you didn't get the bundled version, you. Uh, well, the bundled version was sold out. <laughs> <laughs> Disowned my mother. Oh, right? No, I gotta eat. I gotta eBay that bundled version. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's it, like you know. The more I think about it, December doesn't seem as bad to announce it as I initially thought. It, cause it, it's right. It's after all the major holiday like releases came out, so it, it kind of it could own its own news cycle, basically. And a lot of people think Nintendo is kind of waiting so they could have their own news cycle. And for that, this month and December is all that's left this year. Yeah, October. There's like nothing going on. The VR just came out. That was it. So from this point on, the rest of October, they can own the news cycle. But yeah. they might be afraid that if they announce it in October, they own the news cycle until all the big games come out in November, and then people forget about it. Yeah, well, I, I, I think, think that's kind of why. I think why if, if Mr. Uh, the, the late Satoru Iwata didn't pass away, I think that it would have been revealed at E3. Because that's just what he does. Yeah, I think part of the reason why... Well, two years ago, and I think it was 2015's E3, they said Iwata wasn't there because there was no new hardware to unveil. Well, yeah, but we also discovered there was some other reasons. Yeah. Obviously. They just didn't want it, like, they didn't want it dominating the news. Or he yeah. didn't want it dominating the so, news that... The real reason he's not there isn't necessarily hardware. It's that he's he's on his deathbed. It's his hardware, really. 
Like he knew he was gonna pass. Like he at uh, that because the, all those all these uh, new like interviews have come out saying that he knew like before E three even happened that he wasn't gonna make it and was already making plans. Um. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> uh, no, it's okay. And as soon as you as soon as you said that, like uh one one of those you know, one of those super annoying video ads is playing on Zelda Inform right now. And as soon as you uh as soon as you uh, said that wait for it, wait for it, all of a sudden um the Zelda chime came on da na 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 I'm just like I'm just like that's perfect timing. How I gotta somehow fit that into the podcast. Make it happen. Time to go get my, my copyrighted sound effects so Nintendo claims our podcast. Um well, you just got anyways, to different side uh, effects. So let's just move on to the last topic that I had uh, for do stuff. And this is just more um, an interesting discussion. Uh, the creator of Dark Souls has stated that uh, Zelda's not worthy. Or that Dark Souls isn't worthy Zelda's of being compared worthy, yeah. to Zelda. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, you Zelda's were about to not worthy. make a lot that's of fanboys really mad. That's what's really I'm mad. sorry. <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got caught up in um, a lot of the fan chatter after we reported this as people saying that Zelda's not worthy to stand up to Dark Souls. Ooh. So it kind of got my words mixed up. Um, so here's what he said. Here's what uh, Hideki uh, Miyazaki, I'm sorry if I butchered that, said. He said, when I was a student, The Legend of Zelda was truly monumental. So to be perfectly honest, I feel deeply unworthy of the comparison. The Legend of Zelda and Dark Souls are different games belonging to different genres, and they are guided by different concepts of game design. They don't need to aspire to the same ideals. If there are similarities, it's probably just from the fact that The Legend of Zelda became a textbook for 3D action games. Yeah, I think there's tons of developers that have been asked in interviews if they could work on any franchise, what would it be? And tons of them have come out and said that they would love to work on the Zelda series. Well, Zelda's been inspiration for yeah, <laughs> like like a, like a lot. Yeah, like AAA like, developers, uh, God of War indie developers, and God of War and yeah. Well, Dark Siders was, qu- was like a quite literal, just like 3D dot game heroes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so. Um, it just, just an interesting, I mean, you don't have to spend a lot of time on this topic, but I just kind of wanted to talk about, so have any of you guys even played Dark Souls? Barely, yeah. barely. Okay. Barely. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure for Darren, that's a big no. And Bloodborne. I have not. <laughs> I want to, but I have not. Yeah, as I say, I know you don't. That's pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> um, I beat the first Dark Souls, uh, played Dark Souls 2, have not played Dark Souls 3 yet. Yeah, I heard, I heard it's really good. Um, I like personally, I, I like the Bloodborne series. Bloodborne, uh, well, yep, that's kind of in the same it, vein. It's more faster paced. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's well, in the same vein. Um, well, okay, well, I have, well, I haven't played Dark Souls. I have watched the Game Grumps play Bloodborne and Dark Souls Three, and um, you know the best way to experience games. <laughs> the best, uh, well, of course. <laughs> yeah. This is true. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> But um, I, I must say that I do see a lot of Zelda in those games. Whether it's because the developers took inspiration or whether it is because Zelda has become a textbook for 3D adventure games remains to be well, seen. What but I see often is that people, um, a lot of fans, say that Dark Souls is what Zelda could have become if it had gone in a more hardcore difficulty route mm-hmm. versus the more casual try to appeal to everyone route. Well, like, well, you say that, but Zelda Two was basically Dark Souls before Dark Souls. <laughs> yeah, the first Dark two. Souls. Well, it's a great game, and it sold really, really well. It's kind of one of those. Uh, I said something about this the other day on Zelda Four. Something about the difficulty, where it's kind of like some people really, really love difficult games, and that's what Dark Souls is. It's a difficult game. It's got more aspects to it than just the difficulty, but that's what people know it for. It's difficult. It's not something your mom's going to pick up and play unless she happens to love difficulty as well. Which, hey, I don't know. Your mom might be into that kind of stuff. My mom would hate it. My mom will play Cooking Mama. She is... Like, my mom will play Wii Sports. She's not going to touch Dark Souls. Um, I can't even get her... I can't get even get her to play Zelda. So... Um, and then you have Zelda, which is easier. I mean, just call it like it is. Zelda's a pretty easy, like, franchise overall once you get past the classic games. Um... You know, Skyward Sword isn't that difficult. 
Uh, Breath of the Wild's um, demo actually to me was more difficult than most of the recent Zelda games I've played. I could disagree with you on the Skyward Sword part because of the motion controls, but I know you love them, so I'm just gonna. Well, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. I watched someone live stream through it. All they did was just waggle and randomly swing their arm around, and they beat the game. <laughs> like it, you. Yeah, it's just like it's all the other Zelda games where you can just mash A to win. Like you don't have to actually be good. I think it's a, there's a little more to it than that. There, there is more to it, but I literally saw a guy beat the game just randomly hitting. Yeah, he got electrocuted a lot. Yeah, this and that. But the game gives you so many recovery hearts. And so how many, many fairies, times did he die? So many. Uh, he died. He died once against demise. Well, yeah, that's that's hero mode. This person wasn't playing hero mode, of course. Um. But yeah, so I don't know. Obviously, you, if you think Skyward Sword is difficult, that's fine. The I next time I play Skyward Sword, I think I'm just Skyward Sword. My arm around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it. Skyward Sword is beautiful if you're playing it the way it's supposed to be played. Like I love the combat in the game. Um, but then again, my favorite game is Zelda Two, and like it just doesn't compare um, difficulty wise. So that's kind of the way I view it. It's kind of like fans look at it as Zelda branched off one way but it could have branched to Dark Souls like that, that could have been what the series I, became I would agree with that actually because like honestly you look at the first two games I think like I loved them both um and it, if sure. if it could have gone to A Link to the Past or, or if say someone just took those first two games went to a game developer who's never played another Zelda game and said hey here's <laughs> Zelda 1 and 2 make a modern sequel to these games I could see it coming out as Dark Souls. As Dark Souls. And now I could also sure. see it coming out as A Link to the Past or something close so to that. So the question is, so, though. Yeah. The question is because the, the creator said it's not worthy. Is Dark Souls actually worthy of being compared to Zelda? Like, is it in that same ballpark as, like, Zelda's a legendary franchise that set industry standards? Like, is Dark Souls at that level? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, sure, yeah. sure. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But the think- best way I can answer this is if a game's compared to Zelda, it's being compared by how great it is or some of the inspiration it may have took from Zelda. If something's being compared to Dark Souls, it's usually just the difficulty. It's not mm-hmm. whether the game is amazing or great or crappy. It's just, oh, this game's almost as hard as Dark Souls or this game's harder than Dark Souls. Mm-hmm. I think... Um I think Dark Souls is worthy of a comparison at a pure game level. Like, it's a really, really good franchise. Like, consistently good. Even Dark Souls 2, which people you know are really divisive on how good it is, it's still a really good game. And, I mean, come on. Um, I know I love Zelda 2, but that's not the popular opinion of most. I love Skyward Sword. It's not the popular... Like, Zelda has had its low moments with most of the fan base. Yeah. Um, so it's not like Zelda... Yeah, I would say... Well, no, no, no. I don't think... Oh, great times... Never, yeah, I don't think it's a low moment. No. There's yeah. no, 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 no. I like Ocarina of Time. Ocarina Nate of Time has is gone on record as it. saying Ocarina of Time sucks. Yes, Ooh. I have said that, but it's in. It, there's context to that <laughs> that's missing. Because the only game I, the only game I actually think is bad is Phantom Hourglass. I don't think any other Zelda game is bad. You are not no. a true Zelda fan. Oh, hey, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, that Darren, Darren started with Phantom Hourglass. Nah, you yeah, know, I, I, I love Phantom Hourglass. Gotta, I would say I would skip Phantom Hourglass, just play Spirit Tracks. It's just, yeah, they I took everything from Spirit Tracks is so much better. They're so both better. great I'm most games. disappointed in. Um, anyways, it, it's fine. Like, you can, like, Phantom Hourglass is the most popular handheld game in terms of sales. It's cool if you really love it. I have nothing against you. I just don't think, like, even, forget a good Zelda game. I just don't think it's a good game. I think it had a couple really clever parts, um... Like, uh, the part that a lot of people got stuck at where you got to close your, 3D, your DS and open it up um, to stamp the map. Like, I thought that was really clever. But um, just there, there's so much in that game, I think, just is a bad game design. But, again, we're not here to talk, to debate over what's good and what's bad with Zelda. 
Yeah. Yeah. I think I think yeah. it's kind of like I, I kind of look at it like this. Zelda means more to gaming than Dark Souls does. Yeah. But Dark yeah. Souls is at the same quality level that Zelda is. Like you look at Dark Souls 3 and then you look at Breath of the Wild. I you know, from what I have played, I would say, you know, the the quality is really on par between both games. It's just two different directions. Yeah. Now it's maybe it's just, uh and, and I kind of look at it like this, and this is where I can see where maybe he doesn't feel it's worthy. Breath of the Wild, by a lot of media people at E3, the way that it was being covered, is being viewed as a game that might be setting brand new standards for open world games. Mm-hmm. Dark Souls isn't looking like it's setting new standards for anything. No one's looking at it as, you are the new standard for X, Y, and Z. Like, yeah. that's not the mm-hmm. way it's viewed, but Zelda is viewed that way. So in that respect, you could be like, okay... Dark Souls will never be viewed as a game that might set the standard for the industry. That doesn't yeah. mean it's not amazing. Another way to look at it is, say, if Breath of the Wild was just cancelled, and no Ooh, other Zelda game... Stop, don't say that. And, <laughs> and no other Zelda game was I'm ever made. I'm already worried the NX is cancelled. Don't do this to me. <laughs> and then, uh, if Darksiders 3 was shown off, and then just cancelled, and no other Dark Souls game... Would the impact of Dark Souls not having the third game after being shown off, and then no other game being made similar to the franchise, would that be even half of the impact that Breath of the Wild being cancelled and never another Zelda game coming out? Especially would, it, would the impact you know, even I, I kind of look at it like this, too. Because um, obviously Dark Souls 3 is out, so we know how good that game is. An awesome game. I haven't played it yet, but I, I mean, I like, the, I like Dark Souls, so eventually I will get around to it. The Breath of the Wild's like I- like internet imprint from this past E3 was like bigger than any game in history. So if that game coming off that kind of hype level got canceled, it would be devastating to many many people. Like, how does that get canceled? How does a game that literally owned the internet all summer just not not ever release? Like, not even you're not even gonna release the demo area if you don't want to finish the game. Like. How does that not release? Um, so I think, and the fact that Zelda's been around for 30 years, so there's a, a long-standing history, um, and part of that history is, you know, like setting industry standards. Um, it would be it would be a more devastating thing because Dark Souls is a newer franchise. I think if Dark Souls had been around for 30 years and had at least one game in it that was viewed as a as a trendsetter, um, it would be equal to impact. But I, I think you're kind of right. It's kind of like Dark Siders. Dark Siders is really really good. Dark Siders Two is really really good. But it, it's like that that series might be done. They're talking about making it. Who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> well, the thing is, it's like it's not going to be the exact same development team. So there's a high chance that even if it continues, it's not going to be at that quality level. <laughs> Do you fa- see? I thought about that too, but I'm really scared for like the Last Guardian, and I've had so much faith that it would be good. But see, at least the Last Guardian has like the same people behind it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You, um, you can say the same about Final Fantasy 15. But yeah, so 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 at least to me as I said, I view it as Dark Souls quality-wise is comparable to Zelda. Um industry impact-wise is not, and that might be what he's talking about. And that might be why he also goes on to explain how they're kind of different games in different genres. They're not really in different genres per se. You could argue, you know, whether Zelda's an RPG or not, um, but those like the action adventure and the action like RPGs have like really crossed so much in the past um, that it's really hard to tell the difference between them. Um, you know, I guess a leveling system is one of the big things these days, apparently. Um, but then again, is Zelda a leveling system when you increase your life, when you increase how good your gear is, like they're doing in Breath of the Wild? Yeah, argue even, that's a form of leveling. Even Skyward Sword had a strong presence of RPG. Sure. And that's the thing. Like Zelda's always had, like, you don't... I mean, in Zelda 2, you literally level up. But mm. on all Zelda games, you get stronger throughout the game. You gain hearts. You gain better gear. Like, it's always kind of been, like, action-adventure and um, action RPGs are really, like... There's not a whole lot of difference between, the, between them. Um, there can be. There can be. Like, Dragon Age, as an example, that series is way different. Than Zelda in terms of approach to how they do that. It's definitely like not like the same kind of genre. It's not even a JRPG. Um, 
it's a. Uh, I wish they would have stuck with it more, uh, like in Origins and even Dragon Age Two. Um, at least, on, especially on PC, you could do. Yeah, Dragon Quest. Dragon Quest is a JRPG. That's a JRPG. No. Yeah. 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 No, it's okay. It's easy to get. A, there's Dragon what? Um, <laughs> anyway, so, so let's move on to our fan topics because we have some awesome fan topics this week, um, and I can't. Oh my god! You want me to butcher it again? <laughs> Oh my gosh! For for the lulls, let me let me butcher. I'm, I'm I butcher these names so bad. Oh, I already closed the post. Hold on, me. See, I thought I thought. Oh, hey, we're moving on. Oh wait, I better reopen it just so I can see, pronounce the name. What, what All if, right, here we go. Let me butcher. Here we go. Shit. Um. Uh, what is it? Uh, Hitaka Miyazaki. Oh boy. Oh boy. I'm gonna be drunk before we get. Hey, EJ, right, say one more time. <laughs> Fun fact: I was actually gonna do a game for this entire podcast, but I'm gonna save it for a future one. Um, we just have too much to talk about. <laughs> Take uh, a shot. So- oh, jeez. Okay, but we'll maybe we'll in the future. I'll get a bottle. I'll get a bottle ready when I know. Okay, we're talking about, we're talking about like interview. No, no. Here's the thing. I'm gonna avoid quotes. I'm just gonna say. I'm gonna say the producer of the Legend of Zelda series, the creator of Dark Souls. I'm gonna be like, I don't know what is his name. <laughs> AJ Oyemamo. <laughs> what? You're the co-host. What's his name? I don't know. Um, Shigeru Miyamoto. Um. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, uh, moving on to the fan topics. Uh, this first one is actually one that was covered, like maybe even four weeks ago now, in the infamous podcast that never made it because my computer died and lost all the files. Um, but the reason this topic is coming up again is specifically because this person um, just knows how to make me feel bad that I. That we skipped it. Because um, I noted that we were going to skip them all because most people in that podcast had already talked about those topics. So I felt like re talking about them again would make kind of a dry conversation. But uh, we have you know, new people on this week. So it's a good time to bring it back up. So I really apologize to those people from that week um, for not going back to your topics again. I, I guess I kind of glossed over it and was kind of a jerk about it. Supposedly, that's what this person claims. <laughs> um, so Jonathan Dyer. Again, I'm sorry, man, but hey, your topic made it back. So see what happens? You complain to me, and I, I try to listen. Um, so, so here's what he said. Here's a cool thing to wonder. How cool of a game would it be to have Skyward Sword's story told from Zelda's perspective? Or maybe from Impa's point of view. The entire story talks about chasing Zelda while she is doing her tasks, and you just so happen to be doing yours coincidentally. What if you angled the story... In the way where you are frightened and alone. And this random person is telling you what to do. Maybe it isn't as exciting as Link's story with all the fighting, but it means she has to use other means of accomplishing her goals without fighting. It could be an interesting way of approaching the story, and I can't wait to hear what you guys have to think. Um, I remember this question, I, but I don't yeah, remember you guys, my answer. Uh, okay. Cool, yeah, you guys, you guys go to town on this one. I'll kind of back off. Yes, no. I have heard of it. <laughs> That's what we do in the podcast. It's Bonnie from Five Nights at Freddy's. (laughs) 
god. I mean, isn't that just Majora's Mask? <laughs> no. no. That that it, it, it's not just a mask. It's just it's not a horror game. Yeah, this there's a true. very clear line in the same. There were times when I mask. felt Ocarina of Time was a horror game. Like looking at you, bottom of the well. More post-apocalyptic. <laughs> if, if um, pre-apocalyptic and post. If Nintendo was doing decent DLC at the time of the Wii's release, then I could see this being excellent DLC for Skyward Sword. But to release this as a game on its own, I don't think it would have much to it other than maybe a few hours of gameplay. Because with... uh, well, in Skyward see, Sword, you're traveling around as Link, conquering all of the dungeons and everything, defeating the bosses, but Zelda doesn't necessarily go through the dungeons the same sure. way when she goes there, or she's not taking on the bosses or the enemies Which is totally here. cheating, by the way. Yeah. She <laughs> should have had to go through the same way. So we have yeah, a well, Skyward Sword stealth sort of like splinter well, plus, cell. <laughs> well, well, we have to remember that like Zelda is, you know, spoiler alert, Zelda is Hylia. And so she has magic. Yeah. And Impa has magic. That Link, Link doesn't have the ability to, to use magic in Skyward Sword, really. Yeah, so, and you would, you'd have to keep in mind that this game would end with Zelda going back in time and then falling asleep. <laughs> Very that, anticlimactic. Yeah. Oh, but like, the, I imagine though, it, that seems extremely climatic. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm like I'm serious. Like instead of ending with yay rah rah, no, you fall asleep. The end. Yeah, like, that'd be pretty what? cool. That that's like that's crazy. Way. What game ends that way? Where you you end falling asleep? Well, I guess you could look at it as it it would end the same way that most Zelda games would begin. Because instead yeah, there you of Link. Go. Waking That's up, starting cool. the adventure, Zelda's falling asleep. Well, to your point, like, it couldn't be a standalone game. Well, we're kind of in the era where, like, you don't need to create $60 premium products all the time. It could easily be, like, instead of DLC, it could just be, like, a $20 game in the eShop. This could be the Zelda Captain Toad. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, oh, it could, yeah, it, it could be, like, Captain Toad. There you yeah. go. It's like, that was a $40 game. It wasn't nearly it, as long as, as the original Mario game, but it was fun. People liked it, and it was at a price point that people found acceptable. I think... Yeah. I think the way they'd have to do it is also, like, it's sort of also in the Captain Toad structure where instead of, like, a whole open world, uh, like, in Skyward Sword, it's sort of these series of vignettes, you know, so you just have, like, a series of small little levels, and you have to get through this one little puzzle. Because if you do the whole story, uh, then you're just basically playing a less, like, powerful, uh, combat-centric version of Skyward Sword. Because basically Zelda goes through the same areas, right? But if you have these just sort of little you, vignettes, you could, you could work it, I think. I think you could take the same concept and apply it to Ocarina of Time, because once Zelda rides off on the horse with... Oh, Am- yeah. I'd love to see that And game. turns into Sheik, uh, you you would be able, in, in this version of the game, you would uh, potentially be able to see how Zelda gets the idea or transforms into Sheik. And then with Sheik, uh, presumably, you would have different combat skills and you would have to meet Link at all of the same locations that Link meets Sheik to teach uh, the different songs and everything in the volcano or at the ice cavern. I'd love to see a game that takes place in the seven year gap though. I think there's a lot more room there where there's events that we haven't seen before and I'd rather see new yeah, events it, than see. the same events from a different perspective I think. Like, like Jonathan you know, brings up Skyward Sword the reason that the seven-year thing actually seems plausible um, isn't just because there's clearly a gap with some story that could be told. Uh, it's that basically the guy who created Zelda, Shigeru Miyamoto, I didn't screw up that name. Um, <laughs> he said, he said. Uh, yeah, but is that Miyamoto three, or Miyamoto? It's Miyamoto. It's Miyamoto. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I I know I've heard his name so often. If I got that wrong, then the rest of the internet has it wrong too. Um, <laughs> Heck, Bill, Bill Trenner has it wrong. So, uh, now I lost my train of thought, because all I'm thinking of is how to pronounce his name. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, so Shigeru Miyamoto during E3 this year 
said that um, he's very open to there being uh, side games in Zelda. And this was in response to a question about, you know, a different, you know, having like a female Link or all this stuff. And he was just kind of like, look, it's always going to be the Link you know in the main games. However, we could have different characters and different genders and stuff in side games. Um, and he mentioned specifically that he's always wanted to do like kind of a side game of the seven years with Sheik. Like he specifically mentioned like that specific thing as being something that they could explore. Do it, man. Um, what are you waiting for? <laughs> so that's why it's like people always bring it up, but it's like Shigeru Miyamoto himself kind of wants to explore that as well. Now, he doesn't run Zelda anymore, so I mean, it is Miyamoto, so pretty much if he wants something to happen, it's probably going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, you know, they might be waiting to see what, how Breath of the Wild does and yada, yada, yada. When's a good time to release a game that's a side game for a game that only, you know, got remastered in what, 2011? But now we're five years later. Is it still relevant? I mean, yeah, Ocarina of Time's always relevant, but how are they going to market it for people who haven't played Ocarina of Time? Oh, yeah. Oh, HD. They need HD that bad boy. Yeah, and 2018 would be the 20-year anniversary for the game, so it would make perfect sense. Oh, damn. Yeah, and then, and then they could even package in the side game with it. With an option to buy like a digital only version. Yeah, like that. That, that could be their big Zelda game for 2018, and while they work on whatever comes after. So, but Breath but of the but Wild. you know, getting back to Jonathan, he obviously wants to see more explored discovered. So, reality is, is as soon as Nintendo finally, like they've talked about wanting to do it, they finally do a side game for a mainline Zelda game that explores other characters and other events, um, or the same events from different perspectives. That's when you can start being like, look, Skyward Sword is ripe for this. We, we could see, you know, w- what's Groose doing this whole time? We could see his perspective. Other than moping. Like, it, it, you know, <laughs> it, it's one of those things where there is a lot of different ways in a lot of different Zelda games for us to see what's happening behind the scenes that we don't get to see from Link's perspective. Um, so as soon as Nintendo opens that Pandora's box, go buy that game. Because that game selling well is going to convince them, hey, there's a market for this. We should keep making these things. I'm going to punch you in the face. Oh. I, oh, I don't, people the thing who is that Shik don't get over it. Go away. Just, Sheik is just, just, just I'm not worried about though. it. <laughs> Put it this way, I'm more excited to play that game than to replay Ocarina of Time, so it just needs to exist. Yeah. I, um, I think that game should be the Star Wars card to Ocarina of Time HD. Although, Ocarina 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 would, Time would be HD. pretty cool. <laughs> oh. Well then, then it might start moving up my list. Yes, voice acting is all it missed. <laughs> Morgan, Morgan Freeman. Freeman. Oh boy. Uh, so Jonathan, thank you for your topic. I'll move on to a couple because we had a lot of a lot of good ones. That was an email topic. Uh, we have a couple more email topics. One in specific we are not going to get to today because it's ultra long. It would take up at least half of a normal podcast. However, we are going to bring it up uh, in the future. I, I have it literally saved right now. Um, it is from... Uh, what, did he give me a name? Uh, he didn't give a name, but it's from... Uh, he goes by Mythosaur Hunter in his email from uh, a Yahoo email. He uh, sent us a really, really long, interesting one that I think would make an awesome topic for us to eat up like half a podcast with. If we have a slow week... And hey, we've had a lot of slow weeks in the podcast, so I wish I would have had this topic earlier. Um, but this week, we have a lot of good stuff. Uh, surprisingly, we have, like, no topics from Facebook this week. That That's interesting. Huh. That's, like, the first time. Well, we there is one a topic that got submitted while, I was, while we started recording, but we'll see if we get to that. Let's just get right back into it, though. We have one from Sarah. Uh, Sarah Herman emailed us in. It said she got kind of – it's kind of a two-parter. Uh, it said, hello, I've been a fan of Zelda Dungeon over the past few years. Notice how I emphasize that. Mm, I was Zelda Dungeon, Sarah. our old rival. Um, since it was my go-to place when I needed to get 100% completions in Zelda games. Anyways, I have been tuned into social media as much over the summer, so I am recently, like the last two weeks, getting into all of the Zelda Breath of the Wild news and footage. Hey, congrats. Better to be late to the party than not at all, let me tell you. You're still early at. We're not going to get any new information for a while. So, uh, okay. So this includes watching your podcasts, and I just wanted to tell you guys that you're doing an amazing job. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. It's glad to know that people appreciate what we do. Um. So I know this week, i.e., talking about last week, so podcast number nineteen, 
uh, you guys talked about the Sheikah tribe. There is something that I have been curious about, and I have seen and heard only a few theories on the topic. It could possibly play into the timeline a bit, but there are so many theories on that anyways. What do you guys think about the concept of Hadia statues in the Temple of Time, where it was not before, and whether people know about her or even worship her again? Obviously, the Sheikah in the temples do. As you said in the 19th podcast about the Sheikah possibly becoming more prevalent in this game, I find it interesting that Hadia is is as well since she was forgotten and doesn't make sense for this game to be before or right after Skyward Sword. One theory I saw did mention that Hadia could be the goddess of time. I don't think Skyward Sword said that outright um, and it used that fact in this theory. So that, that's the first thing she wants to base top about. Um, a lot, of, like, focus on why Hadia is, like, in the game, like, the statue, what its significance is. Um, yeah, because we don't really know a lot about the Goddess of Time. Just that it's a thing. It's, like, a thing that exists, but we don't really know. We don't have any background. Unless it is Hadia, then we, then we have some background. I don't think Hylia um, was even... Um, from just a, a real-world standpoint, even around before Skyward Sword. Um, unless I'm well, mistaken. Yeah, I'm, like, well, like an actual concept. Yeah. Retroactively, yeah. there's a goddess statue in Zelda 2 that is exactly like the goddess statues in Skyward Sword. So yeah, I, think, I mean, and then that's, that's, all kind of a, that's kind of a but, point to make, too, because at the time, like, when Ocarina of Time was made, mm-hmm. um, Hylia might not have even been an idea, but when yeah. it was in Skyward Sword... It became an idea, so now the next time you visit the Temple of Time, they're like, yeah, well, now you can... Like, yeah. the statue was always so, supposed to be there. So we, we could say that they hadn't thought of it yet, but now that but they that's have... weak sauce. That's weak sauce. Okay. Give, me, they, give me a theory. Come all on. right, my theory. Then. Get, get that logic out the window. We, we're not using logic. All <laughs> developers are lazy, and they're retroactively changing... The, no, no. Give, give me a <laughs> theory. Right. Why? So so that's my real Nintendo world never theory. does that. My in universe. Well, that's because right. this person's like this person's like, hey, I, I want to know like some some actual theories on this. So what what, what do we got? I guess maybe we uh, should let a uh, game over Jesse take this. I know he does some theories once in a while. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, if you guys can, uh, sorry about this. If you can give me like two <laughs> seconds of uh, someone just came in. All right. Oh boy, yeah. that someone's probably highly uh, herself. Um, <laughs> well, I could say that right. maybe the Sheikah never really forgot. Like maybe the Hylians maybe forgot, but I don't think the Sheikah would have because the reason they serve the royal family is because they are literally, like, descended from the goddess. Or Zelda was a reincarnation of the goddess, right? So I think for the Sheikah, their culture specifically was always, like, central to the goddess. Yeah, always built around that. Um, Even if the main Hylian population kind of forgot. And now that the main... I don't know, we haven't seen much of Breath of the Wild or any towns or NPCs other than the old man... But it may be Yeah, that... I mean, we don't even know... For all we know in this game, the people don't even know what Hylia is. Yeah, exactly. So, But it could be that all that's left are Sheikah, and so they've started rebuilding... If there's any anything. left alive. If, well, other than the monks that we've seen. Um, Which but, may or may not be alive. They could just be spirits that were locked. That's true. They just kind of... Vaporize. They just kind of explode. Or, so... Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like... We don't know if they're real or if it's like one of those like hologram message things. Yeah. But it it could be uh, that we don't really like the thing, we don't we don't know we don't have enough backstory we don't we don't actually know it could be the statues there and people just see it it's a statue they don't let me say this in game if this is. game if this game I think I said this in a prior podcast if we go out throughout this whole game with all these Sheikah symbols and the only Sheikah we ever see like legit Sheikah not like uh, ones at a shrine that just poof in the air mm-hmm. is Impa I'm gonna be so upset. How can oh. you have Sheikah be like everything in this game, but you only get to see one we need again? More. I think I'd like to see Empa as like a tribal leader in like a town, you know. And she's, well, she clearly yeah. was a leader in the past, yeah. so it's kind of like she she wasn't always just soloing her thing with Zelda. Like there was like a tribe that she was like a clear figurehead yeah. in um, that we've just never seen. We we've, we've heard it talked about, mm-hmm. we've heard it mentioned in Hyrule Historia, mentioned in, in Ocarina of Time, and mentioned in Hyrule we Warriors just as well. Haven't and... actually seen and. I, I would imagine for Impa to be the caretaker for Zelda that she did have a prominent role among the other tribe members. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's there's that whole theory. I think it's only a theory, uh, officially, about uh, even the Sheikah tribe like splitting up into two different groups. Yeah, it's just a theory, um, but it's a good one. Like, like I, I remember that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was just a theory. That's not actually com- confirmed yeah. stuff. 
And also, several times in Skyward Sword, uh, Fi mentions, Fi, Fi, whatever you want to call her, mentions that, like, the goddess has seen you through time, or uh, sends you a message through time, and things like that. So, it's not confirmed, but I, I think it holds up. I do. Let's get some craziness. Let's do it. <laughs> It's so weird to be like, how do you forget about Hylia when it's now the base of the name of your race? <laughs> it's so hard to be like, how do you logically forget that's that's what you're called? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. So, <laughs> this was reminding me... This, this is reminding me of this okay. old article I read like years ago. And it was, I think it was called Stone Tower Babel. And it was this whole breakdown oh. of like Icana culture. It's a great read. I haven't read it in years. But uh, yeah, and the, yep. all the Triforce symbols yep. on the blocks and uh, that are in only in Icana Canyon. Or I think mm -hmm. just in Stone Tower, even. Uh. Oh, boy. Well then, they've that forgotten a lot of my time. Entire <laughs> being. <laughs> they've they keep for, they need to stop forgetting because this has gone too long. <laughs> yeah, that's just so. It's uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's just weird because like because like how does the curse fit into that then? <laughs> like, well, the cur the curse was demise's curse. <laughs> <laughs> But, but to be fair, to be fair, okay, so normally um, it is, like, I, how that curse is explained, it's kind of like, you know, every time that, like, there's a hero, uh, an evil is going to rise. I thought it was the other way around. And yeah, or the way that, way that it's always, the way it seemingly always worked is it's always been vice versa. Evil rises and then Link happens. Mm -hmm. um, except in the, the downfall timeline. We'll, we won't get into that malarkey. Um I mean, technically, Link did rise. He just well, and then also technically failed. not in game over pre Wind Waker when Link doesn't show up again because he went back in time. That's true. That's true. So in yeah. theory, of the curse um, another Link should. Although have at up. least that one makes sense. Yeah. I mean, when, when they're like, "Yeah, downfall timeline," he just lost again and probably died. I'm like, okay, that can happen in any game. Why? Why does that have to happen here? Just because the other split happens here? No. Oh, all right. Cool. <laughs> um. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. yeah well, here, here's the thing. I hope that like Hylia is kind of a... It, you know, I, I'm hoping that Hylia is kind of closely connected to the Sheikah, and because the Sheikah are still clearly pre prevalent in this game, which leaves a lot, you know... Th there's so much speculation where the game could go. You know, some people think it converges all the timelines. Some people think it's before Ocarina of Time when the Sheikah were more prevalent. Um, you know, th there's a whole lot of speculation... Um, I just hope that it's more, so so much that the Sheikah and Hylia are intricately connected, whether it's the goddess of time or whatever whatever excuse it is that like that's like the center of everything that they do. Um, 
And because this game focuses on that, we're going to learn a lot more about Hylia itself and Hylia's importance to Hyrule. Because we know what Hylia meant to you know the Sky Loftians who became you know, Hylians and all that like or Hylians. Like we know how important Hylia was in the past and how important Hylia was reincarnating to Zelda to, to kind of bring the people back down. Like we understand that importance, but from that moment on, we don't really know what Hylia's importance is anymore. Um, outside of the fact that, yeah, if Princess Zelda is still today, like every iteration of Princess Zelda is Hylia, then you can argue that the importance is that you know, Princess Zelda is always there and she's always doing things. But at that point, you um, don't need, like, statues of Hylia anymore because you've just got Zelda. Like, Yeah. Like, yeah. You have your... Well, it, it, but see, that's the thing. Like, like Zelda in uh, Skyward Sword didn't know she was Hylia, so, like, her descendants or whoever else, you know becomes Zelda in the future, is that just the same thing? They just don't know they're Hylia. They, they know they're part of the Triforce, but that's all they know. No, you're right. So, so like, is she not Hylia anymore? Is, is she only Hylia for that one iteration? And then Hylia, Hylia reincarnates as something else? Or maybe Hylia's gone. Maybe there is no more Hylia. Like a sacred, a sacred, like, kind of like the Pope. Like the Pope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Oh. So, so obviously we could, we could talk on and on about how you think. I ho- hope we, we gave you some good ideas there. We've got Tower of Babel involved here, man. We're getting crazy. Um, so here's here's the second part, too, to, like, all this Breath of the Wild stuff. She said, I'm not sure if you'll have time. Well, we made time, so you're <laughs> awesome. Hey. We're also, we're also here, we're also rocking up. So I'm not sure if you have time, but another thing I noticed is with the 30th anniversary Amiibo, now available, well, they're not, they're not available, available pre-order, um, is that there is now a link from each timeline, um, from Wind Waker, which is the adult timeline, you have Tetra and Toon Link, uh, Child Timeline, uh, we have the Twilight Princess with the Wolf Link, Downfall Timeline, we have the 8-Bit Link, um, obviously Ocarina of Time itself, we have the, the, the Ocarina of Time Link, uh, plus... Um, yeah. Here's what I would love. Uh, that's why print. Um, anyways, so uh, getting into it, uh, she says that are all usable in Breath of the Wild. The only other amiibo that we know will work in Breath of the Wild are amiibo that are representative of Breath of the Wild. I was curious of what you guys thought. That's not true. All of the amiibo for that release with Smash Bros. and Zelda will work in it as well. Yeah, um, and all of the Link ami- and all the Link amiibos except I, Wolf Link amiibo. I, I think Wolf, Wolf Link Amiibo is definitely separate in Breath of the Wild because we know what that does. Um, but all the Link Amiibos are, ju- they just register as a Link. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Is didn't So they say it doesn't really actually these... make a difference what timeline they're from. They all just register as like the same Link. But I would love for them um, to all work. It like might recognize that it's one. a different Link Amiibo. So like, say it's like in, uh, one, in Hyrule Warriors, you know, where you could tap your Amiibos and get like little bonuses. Um, so it might let you like tap your Toon Link, tap your, your, um, your Toon smash bros and tap like your ocarina like it might still all be considered one link but it'll recognize it's different versions of that same link but um i i guess what what she seems to be hinting at because she had a little follow-up to it is she's trying to hint at um what this might mean for like a timeline placement i I don't think the amiibo have anything to do with the timeline placement so yeah Yeah. like like these amiibo that are releasing this year for the 30th anniversary or it's because of the 30th anniversary it's not because of Breath of the Wild it's picking what they feel are key characters throughout the history of Zelda so you obviously have the 8-bit Link because it, it started it all you have Link from Ocarina of Time largely considered one of the greatest times of all time uh, the greatest games of all time a milestone game and then because Eiji Nomo is in charge it is going to be Toon Link and Tetra because that's uh, like that's one of what a uh, one of his first um like major impacts on the series in terms of leading it down a new direction supposedly um at least it was one of the more controversial directions he's taken with the series uh so all that can easily be kind of explained and obviously the wolf link one can be explained by the fact that they released twilight princess hd Mm -hmm. um and they really wanted to sell that so that's why they said oh hey look it's going to have a use in breath of the wild and breath of the wild's obviously going to have its own amiibo I, i just don't think amiibo you know, obviously, the Wolf Link Amiibo has, like, 
you know, a really awesome use, but yeah, I don't think it had anything to do with the story. But I would really be interesting like if it. it does. I would love to have them um, all work like the Wolf Link, and you can build your own little party of this like this Link <laughs> Avengers come together. You, you, you tap Tetra, you tap Tetra, and you get her pirate ship in the game. <laughs> It's real <laughs> slow, awesome. but can, it's a tank, raid, man. You can raid villages. <laughs> you can raid villages. Steal bombs from the bomb shop. Um, like, I don't even know what Ape like, would do. What, what does it do? Give you a raft? <laughs> or, and a ladder <laughs> <laughs> to, to boost your climbing it, it, ability. It'll give you the white, it'll give you the white tunic. Um, yeah, it's... It, it, you know, we obviously don't know what any of the Amiibo's uses are beyond Wolf Link. Um, it could be really simple. It could actually be, like, important... Like, you know, um, maybe one of the way you activate the Guardians is to tap the Guardian Amiibo um, for some of the ones that aren't active. Oh, damn. Now, that'd be yeah, cool. Like, like th there could be so many uses. We, we really obviously have no idea. Um, with all the equipment works in this game, to me, a lot of the Amiibo uses feel like it's going to be like equipment-based. Like, oh, hey, if you tap this, you get 20 arrows. So sort of um, like in Twilight Princess, if you had the Link Amiibo, you yeah, refill your arrows. Yeah, kind of like in Twilight Princess, except those were like, oh, you gain health or you gain difficulty. Like, this is going to be like, no, because you think... Or like, if you tap, say, like the Amiibo that has Link uh, shooting a bow, it automatically restores the the uh, durability of the bow you have equipped at the time. Um, because, you know, breakable equipment, well, there is a way to not have your favorite items break with Amiibo. Um, which that might annoy some people too that you have to buy extra things and not break your <laughs> items but people will find anything to complain about um, yeah so you know we talked about this in a prior podcast I just I don't uh, maybe one of you guys disagree I don't see how the Amiibo plays anything in the timeline placement oh come on someone take the opposite stance <laughs> usually I'm like the last one to, like, yeah I'll do it the opposite way that it's going to be the one that combines all the timelines since it has Amiibo from everything Play devil's advocate. Here. It's gonna bring Smash Bros. officially into the universe. <laughs> oh my gosh, they didn't even reveal it yet, but they're releasing one with him on the motorcycle from Mario Kart 8. Now Mario Kart 8's canon. <laughs> <laughs> and the cartoons canon, too. Um, but no, I, I, I really do appreciate um, you bringing this up, Sarah. Uh, it, it is a very interesting observation that now we're gonna have like Zelda Amiibo from all these different things that work in Breath of the Wild. Um, just so far, we have not seen Amiibo have any role on on timeline stuff in any other game. I don't really see how it would suddenly have a role now, um, especially since the most significant thing we've seen is the Wolf Link thing, and that, at least on the surface, we don't know for sure yet, doesn't appear to have any timeline implications. When do we get our gender neutral Linky Amiibo? Oh my uh. gosh, <laughs> Aaron. I'm gonna. Uh, you keep bringing that up. I'm not gonna let you on future podcasts. Um, <laughs> that's okay. He's, he's, he's like, he's like, that's okay. I'm a regular member of the Nintendo Prime podcast. I'll keep bringing it up there. Yeah, yeah. Because we have we haven't created a controversy on that one yet. Um, Next week, boys. So uh, this will be the last fan topic we cover. This is the last fan topic we're covering. Um, just because we, we did have one on Twitter and one on Facebook, we're gonna go to the Twitter one. Save the Facebook one for next week. I'll, I'll pack it up with. Uh, but that, he, trust me, like this, this fan topic that the person emailed me that we're not going over, it is like a, a six-page thing. Jeez. Holy <laughs> It is crap. huge. Uh, it's a very good topic um, that, you know, we're, we're going to break down and go through it as, as I, you know, like I'm not going to read the whole thing and then talk about it. We're going to talk about it as we go. Um, but that's going to be something that, you know, that's, we might even have a whole podcast dedicated at that point, how long it is. But it's a very good topic, so we're, we are going to go over it. Uh, when we when we kind of have a slow week, which, um, unless the next, like, something happens, not a rumor, but, like, like it gets revealed, it's probably going to be a slow week for Zelda. I don't anticipate us having another Zelda interview landing. Um, like we did uh, last week, we had, what, the art interview with the art people, and this week we just happened to have a couple outsiders, like, discover a new glitch, which that doesn't usually happen. Um, and then, obviously, we had someone from Dark Souls comment on stuff. That, like, that, usually, that, that stuff's not normal. That's not a typical week. Um, just make something <laughs> up. Um, remember Zordiana. So, um, N Nintendo Drawing, or at HalC1212 on Twitter, uh, just wants us to talk about, uh, what about if Nintendo is making a sequel to Breath of the Wild, like they did with Majora's Mask? That, that's, that's what, we want to talk, what they want us to talk about. Quick turnaround sequel. 
Uh, I'd love that. Should they do it? Will they do it? Do you want it to happen? Let's sure, let's do it. And it'd be faster because they yeah. don't have to build new assets, right? Wasn't yeah. there an official thing from Anuma or Miyamoto where they said that the next Zelda game would be experimenting with multiplayer using the Breath of the Wild engine? Yeah. So wait, are we getting an uh, MMO? Yeah, they, they haven't said anything for the next one. They said that... Um, they said they want to try that. They also said they want to make another game like Breath of the Wild, um, which I'm assuming means big, sprawling, open-world thing. Like, like they have more ideas and they'd like to do it again. No, I I, I think it should be, but I don't think it's going to be. Yeah, I think I, when they're done with this, I think the next game we're going to get is another top-down Zelda game. Um. Maybe, maybe like a, maybe they might have. Well, NX is going to be combined to everything, so that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like they're going to use it as an excuse to be like, oh, well, now it's everything, so you can't say we didn't release a Zelda game for it because we did. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Like it took them, you know, what almost you know five, probably if we were being realistic, five years to develop this game because the six year here is kind of porting it to a different system. Um, so it's one of those. You know, for starters, on, on the top of the person asked, I would love to see a quick turnaround sequel. I don't know anyone that wouldn't want to see that, um, as long as it makes sense with how the game ends. Um, that would be great. Uh, people love quick turnaround sequels. Well, that'd be crazy. Um, Terminal, but, but as a, a quick big turnaround as Breath sequel. Of the Wild. <laughs> now that's like, crazy. A, a quick turnaround sequel would be great. Usually, you know, like Majora's Mask wasn't as big as, as Ocarina of Time, so you know, you're probably looking at something smaller scale. But people are generally okay with that. Um, it depends on what what you where you kind of leave the story to be able to go, what you want to do with it. Um, maybe you want to do another, you know, go back to Terminal, whatever, whatever they want to do. Uh, so they can do anything they want. I think it would be great. People would like that. We get a new Zelda game two years after this one. That's awesome. Um, but uh, it, it's kind of one of those those things to me that. Nintendo doesn't like sticking to one thing with Zelda. So, if you look at the history of the Zelda series um, since A.G. Aonomu took over, uh, it's been kind of like, here's the one gimmick we use, the whole game's built around that, then we totally throw that away for the next game. Mm -hmm. Do something totally new. And while this game has a lot of new mechanics in it, you could argue the gimmick in this game is it's open world. Open, open air. air. Sorry, <laughs> their term. Whatever. Open air. So, like, they mentioned they want to do that again, but, like, the thing is, if you're mentioning that you want to do that again, that tells me that you're not looking at this as the standard for future games. It's just an idea you would like to try one more time. Instead of being like, this is what all of our future games should be like. Yeah, and didn't they say something similar about the motion controls they created for Skyward Sword that they would like to reuse that again? Well, yeah, and, and I think a lot of this has to do with how popular the game is, to be honest. If Breath of the Wild goes out and is the first Zelda game to break 10 million copies, um, yeah, it's going to become the new standard. Um, Ocarina of Time went out, set sales records, became the new standard. Like, that that's just... It, it makes too much financial sense for them to be like, oh, we had this awesome idea that got super popular, let's just not do it again. Well, if it, um, that, that's not the way Nintendo operates. If they do... You know, Mario already. Galaxy was popular, so we got Mario Galaxy 2. Like, this is just, that's what you do. New Super Mario Bros. is popular, so we got, like, five more games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that underestimating? <laughs> well, there's New Super Mario Brothers, uh, New Super Mario Bros. Wii, New Super Mario Bros. 2, and New Super Mario Bros. U. Well, it's only four games. I overestimated. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think that's right. There's one on oh, Wii, and two on DS. New Super Mario Bros., or New Super Mario Luigi Bros., if that counts, but I don't think it does. Oh, yeah, the, the uh, DLC Doesn't thing, really yeah. count, though. No, it doesn't. That's more like DLC. Um, especially since they, I think they even advertise it as DLC. Um, but yeah. But yeah, yeah, you can get it at retail separate, I know. Um, so that I guess you could argue that's, that's the five, so maybe I didn't overestimate. I definitely didn't underestimate. I was like, uh, no. It actually, it felt bad because they all released like within an eight-year period. So like it just felt like we were getting slammed with it, which we kind of were, but it really isn't that it really isn't that many games because then they switched over to 3D Land. And, and got new 3D Super World, Mario and then we Bros. Two sucked anyways. So what? New Super Mario Bros. Two on 3DS sucked. 
Yeah, I, I, I wasn't that into New Super Mario Bros. 2. The first one on New DS Mario, I played the crap out of. I, I like the one on DS, I like the one on Wii, and I like the one on Wii U a lot. Like, the Wii U one's my favorite. I, I love that one. I know some people are like, oh, I'm so tired of it. it doesn't. It, it's just a really dang good Mario game. Um, yeah, that's what I thought. I thought there was only four. I was thinking, I'm like, unless you call it the Luigi, there isn't. Yeah. Because they kind of stopped, because then they went to 3D Land, and then 3D World. Um, and obviously, you know, now we assume they're making like a full on, you know, full 3D platformer uh, one. That's not like 3D World. That's not like the ISO. Uh, well, they oh. said that they're doing a Mario game. Isometric, with... like, viewpoint, like an actual 3D, like Galaxy or, or 64 or Sunshine. D- didn't Miyamoto say that's what we assume? We don't know. With the Breath of the Wild. If they, if they, after Mario Maker, if they just come out with, like, yeah, here's new Super Mario Brothers NX, it's like, <laughs> you, missed, you missed the boat on that, man. <laughs> just, just port Mario Maker and call it good. Like two, it's so hard right now. I think for Nintendo to go back to two D Zelda games or two D Mario games. Um, well, while Super Mario Maker exists, it's so hard to be like, let's just release another one. Like people could just make those levels themselves. <laughs> the same story. Oh my god! Oh the story. <laughs> the story. Oh no! He captured the stars, or he took the princess. Oh no! no. Mamma mia! <laughs> Then just add a, a story mode patch to <laughs> Mario Maker. Well, there are, oh there gosh. is kind of like a... I mean, it's not a story, but you do save the princess. You mean the 100 level clear thing? Yeah, you do save the princess there, so it's kind yeah, of a story. Yeah, technically. <laughs> it, well, you know what? That's about as complex as most Mario stories, so... Um, but no, it's... it. Yeah, I, I would see them a hard time doing it. It's got to be a 3D Mario if it's happening. Um, and I know, yes, 3D Mario games are less popular than the 2D... But, I mean, a Super Mario Maker 2 makes more sense to me than going in with another 2D Mario game. Um, you know, and, and I don't know what they would even do with 2 besides add more art styles in from over the years. Oh, oh my holy gosh. damn. You, you could just simply add more. Oh, if they do that, then they're just done making Mario games. It's just going to be <laughs> Mario Karts and Mario Parties from now on. Um, Paper Mario. Oh, you know what I would love them to let us do? They need to release a Super Mario RPG Maker. Oh, boy. <sighs> That would be amazing. Yes. Um, you know, people... <laughs> ever getting totally off topic. Super Geno um, Maker. Let's so, do it. So, yeah, sequel to Breath of the Wild needs to happen. Yeah. I, I think I don't know anyone who who has seen Breath of the Wild and likes it that doesn't want to see it. I mean, the only people that be against it are people who just don't like Breath of the Wild. And believe it or not, there are people that don't. There's people that absolutely cannot stand looking at it because they hate the art style that much. Wow. But keep in mind, people hated the Wind Waker's art style, and it became well, a classic, to be fair, right? Zelda's never felt Japanese in the first place. Yeah. That's true, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Like, that seems like a really dumb argument. Zelda has, has been, like, the most Western game Nintendo has. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. We just keep going back to it. Just keep beating that horse. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, this could be the most disliked podcast we've ever released. If people are arguing oh, that they don't uh. like it, so let's uh, <laughs> let, let's move in. Obviously, this is extra special episode yeah. with our five with our five guests and all these great topics. We are we might as well at this point. We're at hour forty five in. We might as well just go into our favorite things from this past week. We're we're already this far down the rabbit hole. Let's just keep it going. Um, and I know Alfred earlier said he has something awesome. His favorite thing from the past week. So I'll, I'll let you start if you still remember. <laughs> oh. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, no. Yes. It is amazing, is it not? Like, it, it is like one of the best games for the gamepad. Yeah, that that but that's part of the that's part of the experience. Yeah. Oh, that makes me so happy. I don't know if our podcast listener though he's been like trashing Zombie U. 
<laughs> like, I'm like, oh, you didn't even give it a fair chance. Oh. <laughs> it's a good game very underrated um, I, I, I could see why there are some critics that didn't like it like why the Metacritic rating is the way it is I could see it because it's just it's such a hard concept to really just get um, a lot of people frustrated with how the gamepad works yeah yeah it is like it's just a, it is to, at least to me what classic horror games used to be like and you just don't get games like that anymore. Um, and that's why I like it so much. That's why I, I still think, to this day, it is the best horror game of this current generation. Um, I mean, there might be some indie games now. I haven't played all the horror indie games, so there might be some that are better now. But um, for at least the main like AAA release games, I, don't, I can't think of anyone that's better at this generation. Uh-oh. Nice. Well, that's related. <laughs> nice. Oh, boy. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> it's awesome. Yay. It's awesome. <laughs> oh, of course I am. Seriously, it does not get enough like due course. Um maybe some maybe I'll have to create a maybe I'll have to create a zombie you retrospective someday. Um, <laughs> give it give it some proper love. Uh let's see here. Let's go with Darren. Alright. Um my favorite thing in gaming this week, oddly, is Paper Mario Color Splash. Um, it released, and I expected it to bomb. I expected people and to hate it. It doesn't suck. And it doesn't suck. It's actually <laughs> a, an okay game. The visuals... It makes fun of itself. It, it makes fun of itself. The visuals look amazing. I, one of the best visual styles I've seen on the Wii U, I think. Um, the humor in it is great. I know some people thought it was kind of cheesy, but I, I really like it. Um, I listened to the latest episode of IGN's Nintendo podcast... And they liked Nintendo it too. Chat. They had some com- yep. they had some complaints, but um, well, it's not perfect. It's not perfect, but it's just it's, the thing is, it's it like it was suck. coming, it was coming from a reputation set by Sticker Star right. that it was going to be terrible. It looked like Sticker Star originally. I mean, it still kind of does, and Sticker Star was just bad. There's no and even the game before. What was the game before Sticker Star for it? Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Even that one wasn't that well received. It was better than Sticker Star. Like, Sticker Star was, like, obviously the lowest point, but it was kind of like, okay, the Wii version was just okay. It really wasn't as good as the previous one. Sticker Star, Sticker Star's hated. It's like the Federation Force <laughs> of, like, that, that <laughs> franchise. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, here's a game that looks exactly like Sticker Star. Like, it's just not going to be good. It uses, like, the same combat system. It's not going to be good. And they literally took all the stuff that sucked and made it like good yeah um i wasn't gonna buy perfect, it but i but watched good. like the first half hour of gameplay today and i think i might pick it up yeah i've actually thought about it being see the problem is i really want to get um both of the new fire Emblem games so i'm kind of like do i get those or do i get this it's kind of whoops but yeah the fates games yeah like, and i think is i loved awakening so it's like i know i'm gonna really really love these games Oh, I know. I'm just. I gotta get a good price. I gotta. Oh, those games. I, I like. I. I'm gonna, like. If I get those games, here. See, I have a modded 3ds. So like, if I get those games, I will like live stream it for you. Like audience, if you want to watch me dive deep into Fire Emblem, I will live stream the hell out of that. I love Fire Emblem. I. I don't even know what you're talking about. So that that'll be fun. Um. It's unfortunate that I doubt that I do know who he's talking about. It's a lot of mil- millennial speak. I'll go. I'll there. go next. I guess. Um, obviously, I, I had a couple things uh, semi-related. Uh, 
One of them's not necessarily gaming per se, although I, the gaming will be involved with it. I built a new PC past week. Hey. Um, this very podcast you're watching or listening to was completely edited on that PC. Um, so we'll see how it goes. I'm hoping that like it, it, it's awesome. If you're interested in the specs, you can just ask in the comments and I'll, I'll throw it in, out there. Um, or you can go watch the live stream. There's like a four-hour live stream on our YouTube channel. You can go watch that or on our Twitch. Um, and, and on our Facebook, I was, I was actually streaming to three different places. So you can uh, go watch that if you're interested in watching me build it. it. You're right, PC building shouldn't take four hours, but again, my first time in a decade. It'll, if I was redoing it again, I'd probably get it done in like an hour and a half. So, um, but yeah, really, really cool stuff. Uh, obviously, there will be some gaming on that. And the reason I bring that up is because Mafia 3 came out. Now, I don't know if anyone on here even likes the Mafia series, but I do. I like it more than Grand Theft Auto. And you basically, it's more of the themes of the game. Like, I'm not saying the quality of the Mafia games is necessarily better than all the quality and production value of Grand Theft Auto, but I always liked the themes of the game. Like, dude, Mafia. Like, the Mafia, like, that whole... Like underground, you know, owning a owning a town, but like the public isn't really aware that you own the town. All that back, all that stuff that happened back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. Heck, there's still technically like a mob and a mafia today in America. Um, so it's kind of like I'm really into all that stuff. So I really liked all those games. Like I know some mafia fans don't like Mafia Two. I like Mafia Two way more than Mafia One. Um, it's just amazing, and it came out this week. And I haven't played it yet. Um, because I was going to get it on a PC, obviously. I just built a new PC. Why wouldn't I get a brand new game to play on it? Uh, some things I'm disappointed, man. They locked the PC version at 30 FPS. For no reason. Like, the game isn't so graphically intense that they needed to worry about frame rate. Not yet. But they, they're, they're supposed to be going to be releasing a patch, I'm hoping. As soon as the patch comes out, that's probably what I'll consider. There's a bunch of other bugs with it, too. And... People kind of saw the bugs coming uh, because they did not let the press have review copies of the game, which always tells you there's something wrong with the game if you're not confident enough to give out press copies. Um, and, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence with it because parts of it, I watch these videos and I watch these streams and it looks really good and I really like some of the story stuff. And then all of a sudden you'll see, like, Jim Sterling playing it and he can't get his character to, to holster his gun. He just holds his gun out and you're looking over his shoulder the whole time he's walking around. And it's like, okay, that's that's stupid. <laughs> like, that's a bug that just cannot exist. Um, and there, there, there's the classic falling through the world bugs, which, again, I, think, I, I don't think I've played an open world game on PC where I haven't ran into an instance of falling through the world. I, just on PC, I haven't had it happen to me on console yet, but on PC, I swear there's always some part in the world game where I just fall through. I don't know why. Even even like World of Warcraft, I've been playing that since 2004, or yeah, I think 2004 is when it came out. Um, I think every single expansion pack packs they released, including this new one, I have found a spot where you can fall through the, the whole world. And just stare up at everything and wait for your character to die if he does die. And then if he doesn't die, you have to like message... Like the Blizzard support team in the game to be like, hey, can you get me unstuck? I'm like 17,000 miles below the land. <laughs> um, but. <laughs> it's better than. I actually, I, no, no Man's Sky is less buggy. That's kind of that's kind of what upsets me is I, I, I love PC gaming. I've always loved PC gaming. Um, I don't do a lot of it because. A lot of the games that I want to play on PC are, are the kind of the games that come out on Xbox, come out on PlayStation. Uh, but the problem is, is they're tailored for consoles so much that the PC version just suffers. <laughs> yeah, like the last P, the last console game that also came to PC that I think was really really good was The Witcher, The Witcher Three. Like it's really dang good on PC, um, and that makes sense because I believe the original Witcher was originally just a PC game, if I remember right. Uh, they, they might have ported it eventually, but I think when it first released, it was PC only, if I remember right. Um, so they started it as kind of a PC franchise, so it made a lot of sense. Just like Dragon Age games, uh, I believe Dragon Age Inquisition was actually pretty solid on PC performance-wise. Um, and that started as originally just a PC game um, with Origins.
Yeah, but then uh, Forza, that just came out, has shitloads of bugs on PC that don't exist on the Xbox version. Um, I don't know. I I only know I only even know about it because like I don't play that game, but I was listening to Frame Trap, uh, the the po- the really really super long podcast. It's pretty much as long as this one is this week. <laughs> um, on. Because on Easy Allies, the people, former game trailers people, they have two podcasts. They have their Easy Allies podcast, which is usually about an hour and a half. Then they have their Frame Trap, which is a bi-weekly podcast. So because it's bi-weekly, they go like two and a half hours with it every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and apparently they released on PC and Xbox because most, not all, they went back on that. It's not all games, but most Xbox games are going to be on PC. Well, the PC version of it's broken, like really, really broken. But the Xbox version isn't. So it's kind of like, even though Microsoft is saying this, it doesn't mean the PC version is actually going to work. And you figure it would, because they're on the x86 architecture, and it should be easier to port. It's just not happening. Um, so so that's the kind of thing that upsets me about PC gaming. Now, there's other things, like PC-only games are great. Civ 6 is coming out soon. Um, that's going to be awesome. Uh, the Total War series, like the, uh, the recent one that came out this year, was it Total War Warhammer? That was the one. Yes. Uh, the, the crossover of the Total War series with with Warhammer. That was awesome. Like the PC only games are great. It's just a lot of the games that I want to get on PC are things that are on home consoles. So I don't I don't want to have to own a gaming PC and a PlayStation Four and an Xbox One when all the games I want to play are on the PC. <laughs> but I feel like I have to because the games I want to play aren't going to be playable on the PC. <laughs> Besides exclusives, obviously exclusive is no more reason. Like I own a Wii U because of exclusives. Or I did own a Wii U. Um, I own an Xbox One. Originally because of... Basically, I own an Xbox One to play Madden. Because EA will not bring it back to PC for some reason. That's literally, it's a Madden move. It's a Madden box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it upsets me. I used to play... I used to... Uh, back, I think it was up until 2007. I played every single Madden exclusively on PC. I didn't play it on any other system. Besides... Oh, I'm sorry. I did own Madden 95 or something on uh, N64. But I still liked it better on PC. But it is what it is. Um, Mafia, I'm glad it came out. Um, I'm hoping that I'm waiting. I'm hoping that things get patched to a point that I could play it like without worrying about bugs on my new computer. Because I, big Mafia fan. Uh, so yeah, favorite thing: built a PC, and Mafia Three came out, and it sucks. And I'm hoping they can unsuck it. <laughs> uh, Oh, yeah, it's such a terrible wording. Yeah. Uh, Jesse. Yes. What's your favorite thing to happen in video games this past week? Uh, all right, well, first, I want to start off by saying when Zombie U first came out on the Wii U, it was one of the first Ooh. games I played for it, and yeah. I absolutely loved it. And yes! I'm telling you, we got to start a Zombie U gaming group, man. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, I, I got Nintendo Prime. I'll just repurpose it to Zombie U coverage. <laughs> And then uh, the second thing that was mentioned was Paper Mario, and the humor they've put into that game I think would be perfect for a game similar to A Link Between Worlds towards that Ooh. top-down 2.5D, but if it was uh, the humor in a Zelda game, I would really love that. And I actually tuned in for a while during your PC build, so... Nice. All yeah, of those I think things, I saw you. Yeah. I think I saw you uh, say something. Was it on the Twitch feed or something? I can't remember. Yeah. It was one of one of the YouTuber Twitch when we only had a, a few people watching on those. Yeah. But, Compared uh, to like the 400 watching on Facebook. My favorite thing that happened this week is uh, not really video game news related, but my little brother is finally getting old enough to where he can play through a Zelda game and kind of nice. figure mm. out the puzzles on his own, but <laughs> okay. he can't necessarily read everything sure. good so uh we have been playing through wind waker for a little bit and i had the idea to live stream his first time playing ocarina of time and the next day we live streamed his first time playing majora's nice. mask and it was really cool to kind of uh see someone experience those games for the first time because especially Ocarina of Time is looked at as not just one of the best Zelda (laughs) games of all time but one of the best games of all time or at least the one that's changed the industry the most so to see someone (laughs) yeah to see someone like dive into that experience for the first time and get their thoughts on it we played Ocarina of Time until he 
beat the uh, Queen Goma in the Deku Tree. So the sure. first dungeon, and then we ended the stream, and the next night we ended the <laughs> Majora's Mask stream after he was turned back into a human. Nice. And uh, just seeing him play through that and talking to him uh, at the end of the video on the live stream, basically getting like that first hour or two hour experience review from sure. a little kid. Uh, I thought that was really great. I know I can't wait till my kids are old enough. Um, I'm definitely doing the whole live stream thing. Like, hey, this is like my daughter or my son, like the very first time actually playing Zelda, not watching dad play. Yeah. Like playing themselves, and I'm just here to help them answer questions. <laughs> <sighs> so it's only like, I so the uh, probably the number one thing I like about having kids. Because um, let me tell you, having kids is very difficult. I have three of them, and it pretty much stresses me out every single day. There's, there's very few days where I can be like, man, I really enjoyed my day because of my kids. However, um, the biggest joy of having children is watching them experience things for the first time. Right. And their wonderment their wonderment and amazement in those experiences. And you're like, things I just take for granted today. Um, and that's kind of like, like, yeah, I was in wonderment and amazement with Breath of the Wild. But by the time my kids play it, I'm not going to feel like that anymore. Um, so it's just kind of, that, that's just an amazing experience that you get to have there, Jesse. Like, that's just awesome. Yeah, and it's something that I'm looking forward to, which it'll be another five years probably but whenever sure. my daughter is able to play yeah. through the zelda games and just experience everything that i experienced at that age at a little sure. kid i i think that's going to be great as well but i kind of get a sneak peek into what that's like uh not to, playing it with my little brother for the first time yeah that's awesome um so darren at this point has to go no surprise podcast ran a lot longer than he probably thought it would oh, yeah. um so our voice from above the god the one guy who's not on camera um, he's got to dip out. So, Darren, thank you very much for joining us this week. Hey. Bye, Jordan Darren. Randall. See you later. You can see you can follow him at Real Dern. Hey, yep. <laughs> I tweet about video hey. games, and I don't tweet about politics, so don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> what, no yeah. Trump versus Hillary versus Gary no, Johnson versus please, no, the world? No, no. Okay. Actually, I um, did retweet a meme about the dude with the sweater today but that's about it <laughs> I, I i heard darren wanted hillary clinton to voice oh my god well, why'd you bring up politics oh. should have just not all right i'm out see ya should have just yeah see you there <laughs> all right so uh we're down to last but not least mr daniel bonjour <laughs> your favorite thing from the past week uh so i mean gaming wise it's definitely not news but um i've definitely always been a nintendo okay. guy uh like yep. thoroughly only the past few years. Well, only with the 360 did I really get, like, outside Nintendo. Um, and on Xbox Gold, I just got Mirror's Edge for free. And I've never played it before. Nice. Um, and they have that free Games with Gold program, which I've been, like, catching up on all these games that I that I never got to play before, you know. And yeah, so I'm really excited for that because I've heard amazing <laughs> things about Mirror's Edge. Um, yeah, and also a couple things. Jesse, you were saying about, like, having this experience with your brother, and it's like, yeah, I, I got to agree with you guys. We got the dad trio here now, because <laughs> my son he's he's almost four now, and it, and he plays through. He he doesn't play through any story, but he just kind of goes. Alfred, around. I miss your life. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky guy, you. Right oh on. boy! But. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, he plays through some Twilight Princess, because uh, when I got Twilight Princess HD, I was, like, super psyched, and he saw how excited I was, so he wanted in on that, obviously, being a three-year-old. Nice. And so, like, he doesn't play through any of the story, but I just kind of copied my save file into, like, file two for him and let him play through <laughs> that. But seeing That's him, awesome. like, explore, he just explore the world, even, and, like, discover things, and he's so psyched about it, and he's so, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it is it is honestly, like, an incredible incredible thing i can't wait to like move him on to more games but i want him to wait a little bit till he's bigger <laughs> so he can go through like the game properly um but yeah oh. hey hey do you want to come play some zelda i'll get my white van <laughs> <I'll spray. laughs> oh my gosh I got you just gotta coat. bring like a portable battery pack in your Wii U, so you can get your Wii U up, just bust out the gamepad on that playground, and be like, "Hey kid, hey, kid you want to play some Zelda?" <laughs> Kick the generator Holy. in my white van. 
Oh I'll boy. write zero concerns. It sounded like you were doing an impression of uh, <laughs> Rick off Rick and Morty. Oh my. Oh my gosh. Morty, we Rick gotta play some Zelda. <laughs> I think, I think, uh, oh my gosh. Oh. I think, uh, because I'm still waiting for you to fulfill your E3 bet. Um, I'm thinking that uh, that for on a future bet, I might just make you for a whole podcast. Just talk in that voice. <laughs> Oh, Ooh, let me hear that. Let me hear that. Yeah, do yeah, it, and then I'll do it. mine. You can't say, you, oh, I could do it, but I, I'm not going to do it now. <laughs> well, man, that's like me saying, oh, I could talk like Mickey Mouse, but then I'm just not going to prove it. <laughs> Next, week. Next week, Christopher Walken depression. By the way, he no, he did not say he's good at it, so... <laughs> Well, in that case, I mean, I, I could do a Christian Bale. I'm Batman. That, that was terrible. But, I mean, I did it. But I did it. <laughs> 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 well, I am sick. I have had a cold for like three weeks. So, um, you figure that would make me... You, you, feel, you feel like that would make me sound more like that Batman. Because I swear it just sounds like he's on strep throat all the time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. Um... So that's going to do it for this week's podcast. I have the extra long episode this week, but hey, that's cool. I get to test on my new editing hardware on one of our longest episodes. That should be fun. Um, I want to thank all of our viewers for being here. I want to thank all of our guests, um, which is everyone with me and Alfred, technically, because even though other people on the site are here, they're not regular parts of the podcast. So I want to really want to thank Daniel for being here. Thank you for having Obviously, me. Darren, who's left, who is probably crying right now as he <laughs> saves his audio. Um, and obviously... Uh, Mr. Game Over Jesse for, for kind of popping in here last minute. Um, yeah, I technically asked him like invite. an hour beforehand, but you know, he responded like, hey, when do you record? Right now. Oh, hey, okay, I'll be there. <laughs> um, so thanks for that. You enabled us for the first time in a long time have four people filling up our video stream. Like, that's awesome. Um, so as always, you can catch us on Informer Podcast on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Informer. Excuse me. I don't know what's happening right now. <laughs> I'm sick, so like things want to come out of my mouth. That's not good. Um, so you can follow us there. You can follow Zelda Informer on Twitter. I'm um, at Zelda Informer. We're on all the social media channels. Um, the podcast itself can also be found at, Z- at podcast.zeldainformer.com. Also, if you download the Podbean app, which is available on Android and available on iOS, and I believe it's also in the Windows Store, um, you can find our podcast, our audio version, on there. So a lot of our Android users have been like, hey, how can I get your podcast on Android without having to like click that download link on your site? That's how. You download the Podbean app, and you can find our podcast there. That's where we upload our audio version. Um, yeah. Also, we're obviously on iTunes uh, and all that great stuff, so you can find us on there. Um, yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, we do have an audio. Like, some people on YouTube are like, hey, do you have an audio version? We do. It's actually down in the description. I always include a link to the download version of the audio. Um, and as I said, you can also find us on iTunes and stuff. A Zelda. <laughs> Because oh. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid avoid uh, Zeltic or Zeltlink or whatever. I, Zeltlink? I, I I can't even say it right now. <laughs> Zeltic is the name of a, someone who works at like Zelda Dungeon. Or does he work at our site? I don't even know. Isn't he a YouTuber? <laughs> That's how out of it I am. Aren't they all the same? They're all the same. Um, so you can follow me on Twitter at Najans. Um, you guys throw out your Twitter handles and um, if you have any cool stuff you're working on that you want to tease. All right, I guess I'll go first. Uh, I'm Jesse at Game Over Jesse on uh, Twitter. Game Over Jesse really on everything. It's kind of a universal thing. Just type and, it in Google. It's just him. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, for YouTube, I have a new theory, some discussions coming up, as always. Uh, nothing too exciting or out of the regular, normal schedule. But fun. So. But fun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of what he does on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. He, has, he has some little theories and he has some discussions. He constantly invites me to live streams that I just can't attend. <laughs> yeah. All because I attended that one time and apparently he really enjoyed me being there and now I'm just invited every time and I just yeah. don't show up. <laughs> um, uh, Daniel, how about you? Yep. 
But I know you have content to tease. <laughs> nice. Sorry, I just think that's funny. Every time someone says they're Canadian, I just think of flapping heads from South Park. I just, <laughs> I can't help it. That's what I grew up as thinking Canadians were. As and a kid. it's not <laughs> racist because it's true. <laughs> no, that's called a stereotype. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I know. I've been having issues with Nintendo Prime, too, so it's... I feel ya. Tech stuff sucks. Yeah, I know. I haven't done website stuff myself. I, I've always had Dennis until uh, we sold... Or until he sold Zelda Informer to Massey, so it's been like, yeah, I'm starting this new site, and it, for the first time in a long time, it's all on me. <laughs> this is fun. Um, let's see. Uh, is that everyone? Me. Or Alfred, do you go? Full Metal um, Alfie over there? Yeah, Full Metal Alfie. I'm not on it. I'm on other stuff, but you guys aren't getting on my Facebook. Sorry. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't well, really I was le- I was let into the Facebook. You, you, well, you're my boss. <laughs> <laughs> Usually that means you should let me on your Facebook. <laughs> I don't have anything to hide. Uh, I don't keep, pay Keep you. those party so pictures what, what sort of I'm like, sorry, Alfred. Like, those, are, those editorials you write, they're just, they're terrible. You're, you're gone. <laughs> I, lose, I lose all my, my paying money. No, but I, I don't really do anything else n- n- of notable quality on the internet except for Zelda Informer. Got any future editorials you're maybe working on? Uh, maybe. I, maybe. I do have something that I might be doing that might be Zelda related, but I'm not 100% sure. Hey, uh, you know, I might as well ask you, because we briefly talked about it last week. Uh, did anything ever happen with Drummore? He had to do a rain check because he had a, an issue come up that I, I don't necessarily... I think I can get One. into, yeah. Um, yeah. But he okay. said he said that he was down for you know rescheduling at any point. Um, he'll just shoot me a time at some point later, and we'll go from there. But he's okay. still on board to do it. He's he's okay. just. So know. folks, when we said we were going to talk the drama, we're not kidding. It well, it sounds like he's going to try really hard to make it happen someday. Mm. Um, who knows when? Hopefully before the year is out. We'll see. Um, obviously, because he has a very very busy schedule. Um, yeah, he's going from town to town to town also. So. Constantly on planes and mm-hmm. lots of travel, but it, we'll, we'll, we'll eventually find a way to make it work. Maybe it's just so much as Alfred just has to go to a Pokemon Symphony and just <laughs> do it nice. in person. Hey, can you, that could be my payment. You could just give me tickets and I'll to just the Pokemon ask him in Symphony? person. Yeah. <laughs> the Is there one tickets. even playing in your area the rest uh, of this year? Probably. I think the there's rest one. of this year? Yeah, I think there's actually one playing this weekend, isn't there? Well, I... This weekend's gonna be too soon for me. Come on, Nate. Come on. Financially, I mean, I can ask Massey's. <laughs> I don't know. I'll see. I'll uh, at some point we're gonna get an interview. Because obviously him. that would work like, in person. What's his excuse gonna be? Uh, uh. It's October 29th. If you know you're October feeling. October 29th. It. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, we're so, gonna. Well, I'll, th- I'll think about that. Right. At any point, funny. at some point, we're going to have. An interview with him, even if it's not recorded, it might just be text. Text only, yeah. Like but, an email interview kind of thing. Yeah, we will have something. some sort of interview with the guy who was original starter of the of the Zelda Symphony. Um, yes, and now does the Pokemon, now runs Symphony. The Pokemon Symphony. Yep. Yeah. So, so and guys, you know, I don't know what kind of questions we have going on for him, but it, it'll it'll probably be pretty interesting because yep. I'm hoping that when we interview him, it's not just like asking questions that we already know the answers to. But only yeah, Alfred be... knows because he's the one organizing it. I so. am. I am. I am the all-seeing eye of the interview. <laughs> all right. Well, that, that's gonna do it. And thanks everyone for listening. As always, um, stay awesome. We'll catch you next week, same time, same place. Yeah. <laughs>